Can you believe it? It's finally here. It's the most wonderful time of the year, unless you get stressed out about how to pay for it. Savewithconrad.com can help you make this the best Christmas ever. You won't make a house payment for the next two months. That's right. Skip your next two house payments and use all that cash for your extra holiday expenses. And come next year, you're going to have a lower monthly payment. Don't put Christmas on a credit card. Pay your credit card debt off at savewithconrad.com. NMLS number 65084, equal housing lender. Savewithconrad.com. December 28th will mark the 25th anniversary of Starcade 97, the culmination of a year-long build where Sting would finally step back in the ring to face Hollywood Hulk Hogan for the WCW World Heavyweight Championship. The stage was set for a main event to become immortalized in wrestling history, and it did, but for all the wrong reasons. And for the first time in over 20 years on that 25th anniversary, Eric Bischoff and Nick Patrick will reunite to watch back and discuss what really happened that night at the MCI Center in Washington, D.C., hosted by Conrad Thompson, a topic that led to one of the most heated exchanges in the history of 83 weeks. And now you're going to act like it's ludicrous that we might think that that's what happened here when you managed to f*** up the single biggest moment in the history of wrestling, and now 20 years later you get on here and lie through your f***ing teeth and say it's because he wasn't tamed. I'm not lying too much, Chief. You I'm f- just- finish over a tan? Is this real? Ad Free Shows presents a premium watch along event, The Fast Count, with Eric Bischoff and Nick Patrick. December 28th, 10 p.m. Eastern, immediately following AEW Dynamite. All $29 level members and higher are invited to join, and Top Guy members will be able to ask Eric and Nick questions about this controversial night in wrestling. No spray tan necessary. Sign up today and reserve your spot at adfreeshows.com. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson, and you're listening to Grilling JR with the voice of wrestling, Mr. Jim Ross. Jim, how are you, man? I'm good, Connie. Thanks for asking. How are you doing today? Man, better than I deserve. So excited. This weekend, it's Christmas. Uh, it's the most wonderful time of the year, getting some uh, family and some food and some football, checking all my boxes, man. How about you? Uh, same, I think. I'm, uh, I'm not sure we're, we're recording. Uh, I'm sure we're recording. I don't I don't know uh, exactly where I'm going to be. I think I'm going to be in Oklahoma. So that'll be good. See my kids and my grandkids and all that stuff. Then I'm going to fly back to uh, to Jacksonville and drive on down to Orlando and go to the cheese. It's bowl. There you go. Florida state and Oklahoma. So not, I got a lot, a lot of fun things. Look, I'm looking forward to seeing my kids and it, the schedule worked out well, you know, being, uh, in San Antonio, then yes. it's an easy hop up to Oklahoma. So taking advantage of the geography. Well, glad to hear it, man. And good for you. This is, uh, I don't know, an interesting time to be in the wrestling business too. I don't really think about that, but I'm sure, you know, as, as much as travel is everyone's least favorite part of the job, it can't be any lighter during the holidays. This has to be the most frustrating time to travel of all year. Probably no. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's always an adventure, full flights, you know, travelers are out in force. So I'm just trying to schedule around it a little bit and I might even fly back to, uh, Florida on, uh, on Christmas day, I'm thinking about it, kids got their things they do and I'll see them before then. And, uh, you know, it's hard to manage. Everybody's got their little agendas and stuff, which can't blame them. So it's, it's going to be fine. It's going to be a good holiday and seeing my kids is always fun. Hear their tales of woe and fun. And so it's good. It's good. I'm a lucky guy. I'm a real lucky guy and my legs getting better, which is good. Oh, good. That's awesome. People seem to have an interest in that, which they should after my God is getting ad nauseum. I'm tired of talking about it, but, uh, it is healing. It's just slow. And it's like they talk, they talk about sex, slow and easy wins the race. Oh, okay. <laughs> so There's something nothing. like that. I don't know. Oh, something well. like that. So it's all good, man. It's all good. we got an interesting topic here today. Very complex guy. We're going to talk about Bill Goldberg. So it's, uh, should be a fun little show. I don't know if we're going to unpack anything that, uh, people don't know, but pr- probably oh, we always stumble across something. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Well, I appreciate everybody tuning in today. I hope everybody's ready for a big Christmas. 
Let's jump in to the man of the hour, Mr. Bill Goldberg, recovering Goldberg, because uh, in just a few days, he's going to turn 56, December hard 27th to, being his birthday. And Hard to believe. You know, what's even harder to believe is I think you actually go back, go way back with Goldberg, even before he got into, into wrestling, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I was a high school and college football official for many years there based in Oklahoma and bill was, uh, a, the number one player in the state, uh, as a, uh, defensive lineman at Tulsa Edison high school. So, uh, I had a few of his games in high school. He was very much talked about because he was the top recruit. Of course, everybody thought much like they would, if he was in Alabama, he'd go play for the crimson tide or he'd go play for the Sooners, but he shocked everybody and went to Georgia and, uh, and, and started. So starting for an sec team is pretty good uh, accomplishment kind of testify testament to his ability as a football player. He was very good and tough and, uh, intense. He was everything you see in the wrestling ring. He didn't change a bit. So, uh, I, I enjoy my early going relationship with Bill and, and that's a source of something that he and I talked about so much over the years, you know, favorite hot dog joints or what have you, believe it or not, Goldberg ate hot dogs at one time. Uh, I ate a lot of hot dogs at one time. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I go back with Bill a long way, probably longer than farther back than just about any top, any person that we talk about on the show. That's amazing. I just don't know that, that most people would have guessed that, but you being the football fan, you are, I guess it's not all that surprising. Of course, I'm sure you follow him, you know, when, when he's playing with the Falcons, he used to be the voice of the Falcons. And he said in interviews that he actually called you up and wanted an introduction. Uh, he would say that he reaches out to you, sets up a meeting, asks if he needs to bring an agent and you say, no, Vince hates agents. I just think that's interesting that before he ever signed with WCW, he reached out to you guys. Do you remember this meeting? What did Vince think of him? I think he liked him. You know, uh, Bill had a lot of the same baggage. If you want to use that term, that sounds so negative, but guys that don't grow up in the business, you know, I, I always thought, you know, I was talking to Bill, but he said, well, I remember you guys did this on mid South or whatever, you know, that was the hub of the territory. He didn't watch wrestling. So, uh, and he knew who I was and. And, and we had a decent relationship in that respect, but, uh, I think, I don't think Vince was, I think Vince was probably underwhelmed of Bill's lack of product knowledge, but he sure as hell liked the way he looked and he was intelligent and articulate. So, uh, but I remember that meeting and it just, we didn't have a, our system wasn't good and, and Goldberg was expecting big money. Uh, and we weren't ready to give out big money to neophytes, so to speak. And, uh which it all worked out, obviously as, as time will tell, but he was, a he was, a, he was a fascinating prospect to say the least. So as the story goes, I believe he, he winds up hooking up with Eric Bischoff and tells him, you know, he's not going to be uh, a $500 throw around the ring punk. Those are his words, not mine. And he's going to make a difference in the business. And Eric essentially signs him to go to the power plant. And I assume it's probably the last you hear of him after this meeting until you see him on nitro as a replay or something like that, or yeah, pretty much. Yeah, pr yeah, pretty much. Uh, they had a, their, their power plant was a, was a good thing and they needed it. And er every territory needs a developmental area. You know, right. that's, that's one of the great things about uh, what Paul Levesque's doing now with, uh, his developmental program there in Orlando. It's just, you gotta have it. You've got to train, you've got to develop new and certainly, uh, you know, Bill fit all the, checked all those boxes, as you like to say, and, and, uh, was, was really, you know, he was a, he was seemingly a perfect fit. The issue is, is that, and I'll always be impressed with the way Eric and those guys booked him. I assume it was probably primarily Eric, just keeping him clean until yeah. you find out what he's going to do, find out what he can do and find out what you want to do. Uh, it's easy to, you know, sail away and accumulate some wins and get him some exposure and, uh, lo and behold from almost day one, Conrad, if you recall back, cause I know you're a nitro guy, uh, back in the day, I was a little bit busy when they were airing, but nonetheless, uh, I, I, I just, he, he was booked, right? 
Right. He, he was booked right. And that undefeated streak was, uh, it worked. As simplistic as it sounds or old school as it sounds, uh, it worked. I, um, I can't help but wonder since you guys had this initial meeting with him, when you clearly take notice of what they're doing with him and, and see that, Hey, this is working. Does it feel like one slipped through your fingers or does that even cross your mind? No, not really. It didn't cross my mind. Uh, but there was a sense of that. Yeah. I, I, because I was familiar with his athleticism and his and Bill's body of work, which did not include pro wrestling it included, it included big time college football. You know, uh, I know you're a sec guy. And I soon will be an sec guy as Oklahoma moves into the Southeast conference, uh, coming soon. I don't know if it's next year or the year after seem like nobody really knows. I know, I know this, I'm going to, my friend, uh, Wallace Marsh and I, Wallace and I share a suite at Oklahoma and because of illness and my issues and so forth. I went to one game this year, which I just, just breaks my heart, but, uh, we made a commitment to each other this week. We're going to go, we're going to take the sec by storm. Uh, Wallace and I, he's an old man and he's going to lease a plane and we're going to go to as many OU sec games as we can get to. And knowing Wallace, that'll be pretty much all of them. So I'm going to have a very unique year next year or this, this coming football season. Uh, with, uh, I'm going to be in some towns I've not been in, you know, I, I have been at the Grove and mm. I've been, I'm, gonna, I'm coming to Alabama when Oklahoma plays, obviously and all those type of things. So it's, uh, we're, I'm looking forward to it, but Bill, you kind of felt like you missed him. I mean, you missed one, especially as time went on, as right. time went on, you sure as hell felt that way. But in the beginning, he was just another big, impressive looking dude that, uh, you know, you didn't know exactly how far his journey was going to go and what route it was going to take. So I don't feel like we really felt like we missed one. Then later on, we would have felt that way without a doubt. So of course we know he's going to go on to be one of the biggest, most important drawing cards for WCW. And then eventually all good things come to an end. It does feel as if once the streak was ended, WCW started their downhill descent. Uh, but that was at the end of 1998, he's still going to limp along through the end of WCW in 2001. And my understanding is Goldberg was still under contract to a four-year deal that he signed back July 1st, 1999. It showed, uh, we've, we've seen in court documents since two and a half million dollars per year, except the last year that would be for three and a half million. And this is way back when, so uh, you've laid out here on the show many times that sort of downside guarantee ceiling was a million dollars and you could earn more than that, but that's what all the top guys were running around with. Does that sound about right? Yeah. The, the, in WWE, I can't speak for uh, WCW at that time, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, but, but yeah, that <clears throat> the, the landmark number that Vince wanted to be comfortable with the very top guys. And that was everybody, all the top guys that, that, uh, were on that upper echelon, you know, the Austins and the takers and. And all those guys rock, uh, they're all sitting at that number, but they, they they blew it all away Yes, d during their, you know, with live events and, and all that stuff. So all the money went into their pile and off they off they go. So that's why we say you could, we can make a lot more money. It sounds like a sales pitch, right? It sounds like it's an unknown sales pitch. I, I remember having that conversation with Chris Jericho and, uh, you know, he, he had been lied to so much, uh, as a lot of wrestlers perceive that they have that, uh, you know, well, you can, you, but you can make more money. Well, how do you make more money? Well, you get over, you get, you stay booked, you perform, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, I, uh, I, I think that that's where those numbers came from. And my current agent, Barry Bloom, uh, was Bill's agent still is. I think he represents Jericho as well and several other talents. So, uh, it was. That's a, that's a, that's a big number. That's a big number. And I think a lot of people, a lot of black guys internally in wrestling were a little jealous of that because here's bill with a limited skill set. Yes. And he, all of a sudden he's making this allegedly making this huge money and he was making huge money. So who has that preliminary conversation with him to just feel him out and, and talk about the, the meat of the matter, the money and the dates and all that. Is that something you're handling? Well, I'm involved in it. Yeah, I'm involved in it because I got along with bill and we communicated well, 
so, uh, yeah, I, I was, I was in that loop uh, and it's just, I didn't think it was going to be hard to get a deal done. You know, I, I had, I had parameters and guidelines that I could adhere to, or, or I shouldn't adhere to. And, uh, that was how that started sailing. It was a, quite an interesting little journey. So as far as you recall, you reach out to him, he doesn't reach out to you or, and he directs you to an agent or what's that process look like? Well, I knew he was working with Barry. Yeah. And Barry is no stranger to anybody. Uh, he represented so many different guys over the years that, uh, and I negotiated with Barry on a lot of contracts. Ironically, now he represents me. Right. So, uh, <clears throat> so if I do another contract somewhere down the road, uh, he'll be the guy that does the, the negotiations <clears throat> part of me. So it's, uh, it was a really a, I didn't have any, I don't remember Conrad, any negativity about the negotiations. Uh, so really no surprises and nothing really came up. It was just, we knew it was going to be a big money deal and, 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 and it was Goldberg does wind up wrestling a handful of matches in Japan in 2002. I'm sure that lands on your radar too, that he still has an interest. Maybe we're just riding out this Turner deal. On your side of the road, who's pushing for Goldberg and WWE the most? Is this a Vince initiative? Is there someone in creative who thinks we could do some fun stories here? Are there talent saying they really want to work with him? Or is it just a no brainer based on his recent resume? I think Vince is probably the primary, uh, individual <clears throat> that, that prioritized assigning Goldberg more than anybody else. So, uh, it, it is a good call. You know, it was a good call for on Vince's part. So, uh, I, I, I'm, I don't, I just, again, I'm trying to think back the controversy, the dirt, yeah. all the bullshit. I don't remember any, a lot of bullshit or a lot of dirt coming out of this negotiation. He knew what he wanted and we knew what we could do. It's then it's just a matter of getting everybody together and, uh, and, and, and making it work and getting a number that everybody can live with. And then we were able to do that. Do you remember? Vince being reluctant to push another WCW idea or talent since the invasion angle had sort of fizzled. And, and, and by that point, I think even the NWO thing had, had gone belly up too. Uh, no, not really. <clears throat> I think we've kind of gotten past that, uh, that issue, uh, it, it, in the beginnings. Yeah. There was some pushback on some talents, I guess, but quite frankly, uh, you know, Goldberg was above that level. He was a special talent. Yes. His look was special. His background was special. Uh, so no, I, I, as time went on, a lot of those issues that were issues at one time be, ceased, they yeah. become lessened. And the goal was just to get the, get the hay in the barn. Get, let's go get this guy, this, this thing done and get this guy signed. So I think that's where we were. The politics were or had been lessened, shall we say? Well, let me say this. If, uh, I think we all agree Goldberg had one hell of a look. And if you're looking to give yourself a similar look, this episode of grilling Jr. is brought to you by our favorite producer of ball trimmers manscaped the global leaders in below the waist grooming are leaving 2022 with brand new products. Preserves cologne and preserve body wash. 2023 is the year to up your hygiene game and start smelling amazing. Manscaped wants to help you do so with this special offer. Use the code Jim Ross for 20% off plus free shipping at manscaped.com. Take the leap into the new year and join the 7 million men who already trust Manscaped. 2023 is on its way. And the last thing you want is to be the guy with the pubes getting in the way of making it your best year yet. Lawnmower 4.0 is the leader of the performance package 4.0, or as we like to call it, the perfect package for your package. Manscaped's been engineering here to create the ultimate groin and body trimmer, focusing on intelligent functionality and incredibly comfortable grooming experience. We're going to make sure that you, uh, Shave the loose pines off your wood with the best tools for the job. A lot more 4.0. How about the old weed whacker nose and ear hair trimmer? Best I've ever used. Hey, let's smell like a million bucks too. We got that brand new body wash and cologne. 
And man, the Preserve Cologne is, is like the body wash, but with a light woodsy scent that answers the call of the wild, leaving you smelling like the man forged from the earth. By the way, this is all cruelty-free, dye-free, paraben-free, and vegan. So you know you're in the right hands and smelling right. So why not use the code Jim Ross for 20% off plus free shipping at manscaped.com. 2023 is on its way. The woods are here. Smell amazing. Ready to jump in? Join me with Manscaped. Get 20% off and free shipping with the promo code Jim Ross at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Just use the code Jim Ross. And happy new year to your balls, Jim. Yeah, thanks. You too, Connie. They're just hanging around right now, but they'll be good at Christmas. Our Christmas balls are here, boys and girls. And <laughs> thanks to Manscaped, JRs are smooth. Check it out. Use the promo code Jim Ross. Hey, so uh, it's reported in the Observer in late 02 that the WWE is finally going to try hard to bring Goldberg in with an idea based around WrestleMania. And Meltzer's going to sort of freestyle that he thinks it's too late. And if it was 18 months ago, Goldberg would have paid for himself. Looking back, do you think the timing was off? I mean, Meltzer was convinced that this Goldberg thing would have been a hit, but maybe it was a little too late now. I think that's overthinking it a little bit, Conrad, to be honest with you. Uh, you get a great attraction like him. He's new, he's fresh. Uh, and, and the rock wanted to work with him. The only skepticism I had about that was you got two baby faces, right? Uh, and is that good or is it bad? Does it matter? It's all individually, uh, thought out, whatever one's opinion, <clears throat> very subjective. So, uh, but no, I think, uh, I don't think it was too late. I don't, I really don't. Uh, I, I, I can understand that, that thinking, but I don't agree with it. Do you, um, what we hear, what we've always heard is that the rock was a big proponent of bringing him in. I think rock even went on a radio station in Dallas in December and was speculating that there'd be a rock Goldberg match at WrestleMania and that could draw big money. And there's even a report out there that rock is the guy trying to bring both sides together. And I don't know if that's true. We'll talk about that, but Meltzer sort of lays out that that would be the plan rock and Goldberg. So a lot of people have, have looked back and said, Hey man, maybe rock did help Goldberg make the jump. Is that the way you remember it going down? Yeah. Rock had a great uh, influence and uh, in impact in that whole negotiation because <clears throat> he was a top guy. He was the rock, <clears throat> pardon me. And, uh, uh, anytime you can get, uh, you know, anytime you can get the top guy to vouch for you. And want yeah. to work with you at the biggest event of the year. How could it not make you feel pretty good? Right. Well said. Um, of course we know that, uh, it's going to happen, but here's what Meltzer was saying way back when the sides are closer in negotiations than they ever have been in history. And it would be a huge guarantee to work two matches with the rock. The first at WrestleMania on March 30th at Seattle Safeco field. And a rematch at Backlash on April 27th, presumably a situation where each wrestler would get one win and that would alleviate problems with finishes on both sides. The funny thing is WrestleMania is probably the worst possible time for it to be financially worth it to do the match. A WrestleMania show with all the major names and big programs, even in a downtime, just because of the name and tradition of the show will probably do somewhere around 750,000 buys. Perhaps a rock Goldberg match will get that number up to the 850 that rock and Hogan drew last year. Wrestling was stronger last year. Rock was a bigger deal last year. And there's no guarantee that Goldberg with less nostalgia value than Hogan and having been off TV at that point for more than two years, that they'd be able to build it up as much as last year. So as I like to say a lot to unpack here, and I do think there's some wisdom to what Dave is saying there that, Hey, on a certain level. A whole bunch of people are going to, uh, to buy WrestleMania either way. You might not need to load it up with every possible main event match. Maybe you do save a little bit for another time and see if you can get another big buy for a special attraction. Do you remember Vince ever adopting that theory that we can't give them too much at WrestleMania or was it like we imagined, man, let's throw all of our big guns at it. 
Yeah, don't worry about the mules. Just load the wagon. Yeah. Quite frankly, no, you don't save nothing back. What the hell? I, that's a, that's more outside the box thinking from, from those that are just guessing. Right. You got, if you got an attraction, he's going to sell more buys. It's going to be more uh, lucrative than you go with it. Uh, save nothing. Uh, I don't, I don't agree with that philosophy. You go with it and, uh, and build from it. So that's what we try to do. Grow with it, build from it and, uh, and deliver a hell of a, a attractive, very marketable main event. Is the reason Goldberg wasn't at WrestleMania is because it just took longer to get the deal done. And by that point, you maybe already had other plans. I think so. I think so. The best I recall, uh, it, it, it drug its feet. And that's one of the reasons Vince didn't like dealing with, with agents. Uh, you know, he had dealt with Barry many times with right. the talent, but it, he it still, he didn't like the concept of the slowdown and the dialogue and the back sure. and forth and all that stuff. So, uh, I, that was, that was the issue. Just, it was just, it got cumbersome until you get comfortable with somebody you're negotiating with. Uh, it, sometimes it's just, it seems like you're just standing in, in deep water and you're not making much progress. We finally made the progress we needed and, and made the, the talent happy and company happy. So for me, I did my job. I thought, you know, that we did what we needed to do to get the match in the ring, as they say. Well, we know what's going to happen. And it's just fascinating to me to think that, you know, if it would have been Goldberg and, and the rock at that WrestleMania, where would that have left Austin? Because as we recall, that winds up being Austin's last match. And I, it would be hard for me to imagine him doing that with, with almost any other opponent. So I'm glad it wound up working out the way it did. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I can't even come up with a good answer for who Austin would have wrestled in his last match. If that wasn't the last, well, there was one. only one option, Conrad. Yeah. I, here's, this is a case where we're overthinking it and, and I'll do respect the, the rubber Austin owed rock a win and he was hell bent on, on delivering it. That's an old school way of looking at it. Austin had been. Had won two WrestleMania matches with, uh, you know, 17 and 19 or excuse me, uh, 15 and 17. Yeah. Yeah. Two of them. And he, he felt like he owed rock that return because number one, the Steve's health was deteriorating as we all know, it's well documented. Uh, and you know, the night before that he had his health calamity. So, uh, we, we were, but there's no other match that we thought about uh, doing uh, uh, what are you going to do with so-and-so? Well, we know that rock's going to wrestle Austin period. And rock's going to put, get put up. It's going to be, get a, his hand raised finally. So, uh, no, that was, there was never any de debate or discussion on who was, who was going to be in that. The only tweak that was made based on Steve's hospital stay the night before, uh, you know, was, uh, what order on the card? Yeah. Who's going to go on last. Yeah. And out of safety sake and precautions, uh, we decided to put, uh, Kurt and, and Brock on last because they seem to be the healthiest guys. And, uh, so yeah, it was, it was, uh, Austin all the way. That's what the audience wanted to see, you know, could do, could Austin win three, could rock win one good story. And, uh, and those guys delivered a hell of a match and, and, uh, it was hard. That's probably one of the hardest matches I recalled because of my closeness with Steve and my friendship with him to know that this was his last match. And he's not one of those bullshit guys. that's going to say, well, he's going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to unretire. Uh, I just, I don't know. Just, he's just a different guy. I, when he said it was his last match and he told me that then it was, uh, it was troubling because I didn't want to see the company without him, without Steve because he was so valuable to what we were doing and what we had done, and what we had built. There's no way in the world, in my opinion now, Conrad, I might be wrong. There's no way that I would think that the WWE had, would have gone public with such a, a fanfare and success if stone cold had not been stone cold. Yeah. I think that's fair. Yeah. I mean, he changed the whole industry. Um, so listen, you know, we've heard back in the day that that Vince would sort of book WrestleMania to WrestleMania and work his way backwards. So if the original plan maybe was Goldberg rock at WrestleMania, that doesn't work out, but we knew we're going to it 
right away. So right after WrestleMania, that's the direction. But if we're going to sign Goldberg to say a one-year deal, we probably have in mind what the next WrestleMania will be. Since we missed this one, we got him for a year. We'll make sure that we finish him up at WrestleMania with him against. Did you know at the time it would be Brock Lesnar because he's in your main event here? Or was that something that just you know came along as you went? Well, it's this attractive main event. I mean, golly, yeah. if you're a fan, how could you not like the possibilities of that match and the build to that match? Uh, it made a sensational poster. It, it looked good. All the merchant, the marketing materials were pretty damn impressive. Those two big studs on it. So, uh, you know, no, I, it, that, that just, I don't say that we fell into it, but it was the obvious thing to do. That's right. not, we thought that's what people would, would want to see. And I think on that assumption, we were correct. So Jim, the, uh, tortured report in early March that the deal with Goldberg and the company was close, but the holdup was dates. He would continue. WWE strongly believes it's imperative for Goldberg to work a semi full-time schedule in order for them to build his character properly and to avoid resentment from other wrestlers in WWE because of the stalemate WWE is planning WrestleMania without Goldberg. Sources say he remains so bitter toward the industry due to his experiences with WCW that he just doesn't have an open mind to possibly actually enjoying himself in WWE. McMahon just wants Goldberg in the door on a semi full-time basis and believes there's a good chance. He will then see how different life is in WWE and enjoy his stay. Goldberg isn't a wrestling fan and interested only in it for the money and fame right now, according to just about everyone who's interacted with him. There is a strong concern by WWE management that if they brought in Goldberg for the low number of dates, he's demanding, it would create a lot of unrest amongst the other wrestlers. So let's sort of break that down piece by piece. I mean, you let's always do think, Conrad, let's do a deep dive. Let's do, let's, let's do, let's do a deep dive. Yeah. Let's and do it. Abdul the butcher, AKA Dave Silva's listing. He'll either approve it or not. It may make air. Let's see what happens. Uh, the, the, the cash of the creative is what you always say it's about. Of course, a big piece of that cash is the number of dates. I guess that's logical, but you probably do have to keep in mind, Hey, if we do this, we're kind of setting a precedent. Uh, that's not something you were ready to do that. Hey, we'll just bring guys in on a part-time basis, right? Well, Vince was reluctant to break the mold, shall we say? And, uh, I thought that I had a good argument as regarding the dates because I was working with Barry, Barry Bloom, the agent. I've mentioned here before is my agent now it has been for quite some time and it, he couldn't deny, he couldn't disagree with my concept. You know, the object is to get Goldberg over to get him over. He has to have consistent television exposure. Yes. Does that mean every week? Does it mean two segments a week? Does it, is it every other week? I don't know the exact answer and neither does he or anybody else. Cause it's a matter of what's going to click. But every contract that I remember negotiating, uh, had that dialogue in it, that meaning pronoun boy, uh, that meant, uh, I entertain myself sometimes I'm laughing inside right now. Uh, anyway, uh, I don't know where I was now. Uh, where was I Connie? Well, you're saying we need him to get over and we're oh. going to have to have him there consistently. He's right. going to have to make TVs. Yeah. And, and, uh. The other aspect about alienating the locker room, uh, was also an element of reality. You didn't want to bring him in because everybody knows that if he comes in, he's going to be making big money, right? Uh, uh, more than likely much more than they. So, uh, I, I think it was a good argument. I thought we're an argument that we could win. It just, it just made sense. <clears throat> I'm not so sure he got what he wanted and I'm not so sure that we got what we wanted. But I think in the business world, it's called compromise. Yes. So I think we got to a compromising point and, uh, and close the deal. Do you remember having conversations with him and getting the vibe that he really didn't enjoy his time in WCW? Was it, was he very bitter towards the business or was that not apparent in conversation? No, it was, <clears throat> pardon me. Yeah, it was, it was, a, it was apparent. I think, uh, he didn't enjoy his stay there by and large, uh, and if we just fall back on the old argument, yeah, but he made a lot of money. Yeah. Look, I, I, I'm, I, the older I get, the, the less I'm believing in that axiom. I just, 
you know, I, 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 it's not all about the money. And I said many times when people say it's not about the money, it's all about the money. Right. So we, we were close to making his dreams come true, so to speak on the money, but we got to have you around enough to get you over so we can maximize your, your, uh, our investment in you and you can make more money. So, uh, we were like, what, like we're putting him on salary and you got to work every TV or, or are you going to go on the road to house shows that, uh, the, it, the elimination of talents that are getting major television time, not working live events. It should be a concern. I'm sure that it is today for WWE. They got a lot of great talent. They can't book a ball. I don't know if they're running more than one house show a day or if they're, or what I don't, I really don't keep up with it. I'm not saying that to be you know, argumentative or defensive, but you got to, if you're going to try to monetize house show business, uh, then I think that's, I think it's a crucial thing. It adds to your cash flow and it creates opportunities for the talents can make more money than they're guaranteed, which is a great thing. Uh, I, I believe, I don't know this to be a fact, or this would be one of the headlines that people steal from us, Connie, but I believe in 2023 that, uh, AEW will be in the house show live event slash live event business, uh, to some degree. I don't know what that means. So some of us, well, does that mean every other week, every week? I don't know. I don't know. I just think that it's an opportunity that can be capitalized upon, uh, if, if, uh, if AEW is strategic in their planning, I think that's what Jeff Jarrett's working on. So, uh. Good thing for Jeff. He's got Raphael Morphy to help him and, yes. and, uh, Raphael's the best. So probably one of the unsung MVPs of the entire company, to be honest with you. So, uh, anyway, that's, that's my take on that. Connie. Tell me about, uh, Kurt Henning's wake in Minnesota. It, it makes the, uh, the newsletters at the time that Goldberg and Vince actually talk there. And that's actually what gets the ball rolling and new talks. And that's something that. I don't think there's a detail that a lot of people even know about. You remember there being business discussed or just a reconnection when everybody came together for Kurt? I think a reconnection is a good term. I think that's a good term. Con. I think it accurately, adequately describes it. You know, uh, I didn't attend that wake and not for any personal reason, something, you know, whatever it was, somebody's got to stay back at the house and answer the phone, I guess. Uh, and I like Kurt. He was funny as hell. He just, he never grew up as what a talent, golly, what a talent. And I had, I had fun working broadcasting with him. He was very good. He took, he learned a lot from Heenan because he grew up watching Heenan in the AWA. So there are little bitty elements of Bobby Heenan and Kurt Angles, Kurt Angles, excuse me, Kurt Hennings, uh, game of announcing, but that that's a, the, the, a funeral wake, whatever. As much like a wedding and as much as that you kind of lower your guard mm -hmm. and you, and you get out behind the curtain, step out and, uh, and, and share what you feel, uh, maybe it's happiness, maybe it's, you know, whatever, but in, and in, in, in this case, of course, they're, they're grieving. So I, I don't remember the, all the imaginations of the con of the conversation Connie, but I do remember that, uh, conversations were held. And that, I think that what that did, at least in my view, it showed Goldberg just how badly Vince wanted him on the team. Right. Do you remember there being any pushback from other folks on the roster, people who have, you know, their own opinion of Goldberg, or maybe they didn't have the best experience with him. I mean, we've heard before when it came time to talk about the NWO joining the organization, that there maybe was some hesitation about bringing Hulk Hogan back or having Kevin Nash and Scott Hall back in the locker room and that sort of thing. Does that exist for Goldberg as best as you can remember? Uh, probably not as, uh, in, as much volume because uh, talking about the NWO guys or three of them. So it's whatever angst you have times three, mm -hmm. uh, Goldberg was a single entity, <clears throat> not known to be overly social, uh, but, but a, a, a good guy to shoot the breeze with, and you know, he likes sports and cars and, uh, you know, just the guy stuff, but he wasn't a, a student of the game or a fan of the business. And I don't look at that as a 100% uh, 
uh, well, damn him. He doesn't love the business like a lot of us. Uh, look, it's, it's all about, it's, it's all about how much money you can make the living. So it's, it's a job. And so all Goldberg wanted to do is maximize his opportunities, maximize his minutes. And we wanted to do that and, and pay him as much as we could afford to pay him based on our availability to use him. And he finally got that point. Well, the, uh, the next piece of business that the uh, newsletters are going to have a field day with is regarding triple H. This is direct quote from the observer here. As many know, there's a lot of legit heat between the two. It stemmed from a radio interview Triple H did when the promotion war heated up and Goldberg was just about the hottest thing in wrestling, except for Steve Austin. When asked about Goldberg, Triple H said he didn't think the WWF would even want him pointing out his flaws. Goldberg confronted Triple H. He was with Stephanie McMahon at a toy fair sometime later and caused a major scene, basically calling him out to fight while Triple H ignored him. It was not a stellar moment for anyone involved. I think this happened back in the year 2000. Do you remember hearing about this way back when? Vaguely. Just more wrestling bullshit. Let it go. Yeah. Let it go. I mean, it's not worth spending a lot of uh, time on it. In my view, I had plenty to say grace over. There was a lot of bacon in that panda fry, Connie. And so I was frying up bacon and you know, I heard about it. There was no physicality. Uh, it was just, it was, it was glorified more by the internet than anywhere else. At least that's my take on it. The first time we know that Goldberg is, is going to be coming into the company is actually a commercial that airs during WrestleMania 19, where you guys are promoting backlash and it features Goldberg in the commercial. So that's really the first acknowledgement that, Hey, we got him. And of course we all remember the night after WrestleMania on Monday night, raw. It's one of the beginning traditions of the big raw after WrestleMania here. We're calling it rock appreciation night for having beat stone cold, Steve Austin Meltzer would say rock came out and they showed a video of all his great moments, mainly over the last two months. And everyone cheered him. He had to turn on the crowd, but he does so in such a way that nobody really buys it. There's a huge Goldberg chant. Rock tries to say his accountant named Ira Goldberg wasn't there. Rock does a great promo saying he's beaten everyone and there's nobody left to beat. So he's retiring because he came back to entertain the fans and they booed him. And then Goldberg shows up to a monster pop. Although the first pops for unannounced surprises mean nothing these days, because I just saw D'Lo Brown get one. <laughs> Goldberg came to the ring and speared rock rock was too close to him. So he didn't get any momentum into the spear, but rock made it work by selling it. Like he was broken in half. So let's talk about the creative here for the way we introduce Goldberg, you know, on the one hand, we're, we're letting him brush up against the rock. So how critical of it can we really be on the yeah. second hand, you got your biggest audience, maybe of the year on pay-per-view and you want to make sure that they don't just order WrestleMania. They check out Monday night raw tomorrow. I'm sure that's the thinking and putting Goldberg in the backlash commercial, but if you had it to do over again. Do you think this was his highest and best use, or was there a pivot that could have made it more impactful? I think any time that you can do a significant and recognizable, uh, rub with a rock is a win. And we could <clears throat> think about it and, or, and re rehash it. Well, what if we'd have done this? What if we'd have done that? Well, what could we, you could have done this. Yeah. You, you could have done a lot of shit in hindsight. A lot of stuff could be done in hindsight. But I, anytime you can, do, you can rub up against Dwayne and, uh, cause you know, we're close. I, you know, I call it Dwayne. Y'all are tight. I know. Oh God. Tighter. We're closer than 19 is to 20. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, uh, I, I think I, 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 I it can be reevaluated. Any creative can be re looked at and said, well, what if we did this? What if we had done that? Well, uh, I, I just think that the winning combination is. Goldberg getting to rub against uh, the rock. And to me, that's a, that's a win. Does it almost feel kind of bittersweet to you? I mean, listen, I know, you know, on some level, this is everybody's job and you just got to go do your job. And I get that. But the night before is sort of like the swan song for stone cold, Steve Austin. And now here the next night on raw, we've got the debut of Goldberg. It feels like, uh, times they are changing here in the organization. Yeah, they were. And, uh, I was, 
I thought we could have done more with some sort of uh, tribute, salute, maybe uh, disguised, because we, you know, a lot of us knew he wasn't coming back. Right. And, you know, he said, well, he came back at this two weeks, two months ago or two years ago, whatever it was. And, uh, but normally it was his official. He wasn't going to do any more matches at that point in time. Thank God he's healthy enough that he can do a little bit. Uh, and him doing a little bit, is like a lot of guys having a five-star match. He's that big a star. And so I just thought we could have done more to acknowledge maybe Mm -hmm. his hall of fame career, uh, that we didn't do because he still would have been as over as anybody on the roster. But I guess that's, they want us to for everybody to forget about him, so we could move on to the next new thing, which was Goldberg. Well, let's talk about how he did in the ratings, his debut here. Of course, that's been something that everybody thought, man, we needed that during the invasion, man, what if, and that's finally going to happen. Raw on 331 drew a 3.74 rating the night after WrestleMania the prior year. So one year ago, the raw after WrestleMania did a 5.28. So we're down 30% year over year. Meltzer would say there's no way to frame it other than a disaster of a number. The debut of Goldberg was the high point of the show, drawing a 4.21 rating with 5 million viewers. It gained 580,000 viewers from Goldberg's appearance and the very poorly rated rock interview where he built up Goldberg's arrival. It was good growth for the final segment, but one would hope the debut of Goldberg would have done better, even if unadvertised. Listen, I'm sure you guys weren't actually panicking and, and saying, oh, this is a disaster. <laughs> That's gotta be a bit of a disappointment when you're down 30%. My goodness. Yeah, of course. Just do the math. Uh, yeah. Just do the math, read the numbers. So yeah, we were, uh, I don't, I, I guess disappointed is a good word that we, we use that a lot. Uh, but I think, you know, it was what it was. I mean, golly, uh, we got him signed. We're just getting started. You're right. coming again. It's the Austin element of his last match had a bigger effect on things going on to me than we want to give credit. Mm -hmm. Uh, the Austin element, the Austin, uh, uh, aspect of this whole equation rarely is discussed. People were not ready to say goodbye to Austin. And so now we're asking them to make a seamless transition, ironically to a guy with a bald head and a goatee. Yes. Uh, you know, it's like, I, I don't know. I, I think that, uh, that's a bigger issue than, than we've been acknowledged somewhat, not you and me, but just in general. So, uh, but yeah, I guess disappointment's a good word, you know, disappointing. Uh, but it wasn't a bad rating for what we were doing at, at times, but still, again, I, I, I refer back to this. It, we were just getting started and hopefully everything was going to evolve and grow. Goldberg was going to get over, uh, the, the situation he and rock was going to be intri intriguing enough to get people to tune in. Mm -hmm. So again, if you look at it that way, it's easier to keep your sanity as a talent relations head. Right. Do you, so do you remember, cause we all know about, well, the idiosyncrasies that exist with Vince McMahon and sometimes he'll just sour on something and it's really hard to get him to change his mind. Right. When the rating comes out and it's a disaster based on what it was a year prior, because a lot of people I'm sure thought, man, this is our last big WCW acquisition. Here we go. Do you think he's behind the eight ball right away? Because it wasn't a ratings bonanza. It wasn't a success. Well, he wouldn't, have, he would not have admitted that, but I don't know where behind the eight ball. I think that's drastic. Yeah. He made one appearance company. He? He's on one show. And I guess that was all in one segment. Correct. Yes. So I don't know how we make a final judgment and, you know, stand up and stand and shout on, uh, a segment. Right. She could, she, did we want it to have a bigger rating? Of course. You can say that about the other 10 segments on the show. Sure. But it's just, I just think that sometimes it's easier to make too much of a, it was like a one-off. How's he going to do? It wasn't a one-off, but 
You know what I'm saying? We just did one. We, it, we just got out of the blocks. So it was too early to tell how great it was going to be or not great at all. Well, I'll tell you what is great and that's better help. Um, we want to make sure that we remind everybody that today's episode is brought to you by better help. They're sponsoring our program and Ben is to bring you such a great opportunity to really take control of your life. Relationships take work and a lot of us will drop anything to help someone we care about. We'll go out of our way to treat other people well, but how often do we give ourselves the same treatment? As a reminder, this podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. And this month, BetterHelp Online Therapy wants to remind you to take care of your most important relationship, one you have with yourself. Whether it's hitting the gym, making time for your haircut, or even trying therapy, you are your greatest asset. So invest the time and effort into yourself like you do for other people. And that's easier said than done sometimes. You know, I... uh I needed some help back in 2006. I had a relationship come to an end and I wasn't really sure like, Hey man, how do I process this? And it was easier to talk to a stranger, a trained professional, just one of my friends or family members. And I felt a lot better. BetterHelp is an online therapy service that offers video phone and even live chat sessions with your therapist. You don't even have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. And it's much more affordable than in-person therapy. And you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. So give it a try and see why over 2 million people have used BetterHelp online therapy. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp and Grilling JR with Jim Ross listeners. Get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash JR. That's betterhelp.com slash J-R, B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash J-R. And Jim, it's uh, it's helpful to sort of organize your thoughts. Uh, without get- a doubt. I know some people are probably giggling. Well, I'd never do that. Well, check your man card at the door. Step into reality and experience what can happen when you're uh, honest with yourself. Man, there's, there's, if this is around... And I was aware of it, <clears throat> Conrad, uh, back in the day when, after, after I lost Jan, uh, that's a source I'd have, I'd have sought out. Yeah. You know, somehow or another, I've gone through it by myself and worked it out by staying positive, staying busy, doing the work that I love. And, but yeah, man, this is a, a try it. Maybe after one visit, you're going to feel a hell, hell of a lot better and say, man, I'm onto something. I should have done this a long time ago. I think you'll have that same sentiment uh, if you if you give uh, BetterHelp a try. BetterHelp.com forward slash JR. So let's talk about uh, Rock and, and Goldberg sort of getting married together uh, because clearly that's the next feud here. April 7th, there's a Raw in Milwaukee and Meltzer would have this to say. Goldberg was talking to Nash earlier in the night about his angle where Nash was going to power bomb Jericho and Goldberg made a comment about Jericho selling, which naturally got back to Jericho. It's believed either Nash told Jericho or more than likely Shane Helms overheard the conversation and went to Jericho. <laughs> but Jericho went to Goldberg and said something to the effect of that. They were no longer in WCW and in WWE guys try to help each other. So if he has anything creative to say, to say it to his face or else stay out of his business, the two had words, which heated up and the language got colorful. Apparently Goldberg went to grab Jericho by the throat and Jericho grabbed a front face lock and they both went down when it was quickly broken up. The two had more words after it was broken up back and forth before both shook hands. In some circles, Jericho is kind of a locker room hero since Goldberg is the outsider and there's this natural resentment for him getting such a great deal and starting out on top, having never paid his dues. Plus Jericho stood up to a guy who's probably a good six inches taller and 55 pounds heavier than he is. So here we are, man. I mean, we're just a couple of weeks into this deal and we've already got some personal backstage issues as the guy who's in trouble or not in trouble in charge rather of running all of this. Are you, 
Is this a, a long day at the office? What do you remember about oh, this? Of course it is. There's another long day at the office. I, uh, I happened, uh, you know, you, uh, the word travels fast in, in the locker room and along the way, those words are always embellished. It's always more extreme than it really was. Uh, I walked in to the locker room. Don't remember what uh, city we were in, but there was a big, uh, big ass locker room bigger than normal. I walked in just as Jericho was applying the front face lock. Hmm. So I was an eyewitness and, uh, Jericho was like a, uh, pit bull. He just was relentless. He wasn't going to let go. And, you know, sooner than later, <clears throat> you, you, the, the other guy passes out, right? You restrict the flow of blood to the brain. The oxygen is deprived night, eat night. And, uh, it's got the same effects as a, if you're an MMA fan, as a rear naked choke, you just, you lose your senses and, and there you go. So they got, they, we broke them up and, uh, the talents were there to, you know, obviously I didn't step in and physically push them aside, but I certainly did my share of, uh, encouragement to stop this stupid shit. And uh, they did. And so, uh, but I think Jericho kind of notched his gun a little bit in that, in that scenario. And it didn't do Goldberg any favors, right? He was a heel before the little uh, dust up and he was a bigger heel when it was over with a talent. So, uh, it was a interesting day. Yeah. Interesting day at the office is to, is a good way of describing it. How does Vince, I mean, what's his take on this? Clearly he wants a harmonious locker room, but if there is quote unquote competition, sometimes that's not bad for business. No. Does he like when talent are a little on edge like this, or is yes. this just taking it too far? Uh, no, he likes it. Okay. You, you mentioned that word harmonious locker room. That was always one of my, uh, my things, you know, I, I looked at managing this talent roster, like a sports team and you want your team to be unified and supportive of each other. It's a team game. Unless somebody figures out how to go out and wrestle by themselves with the invisible opponent. And I know that's been tried. It's still hideous. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I think he liked the competition. I, I liked, I love the competition personally. I did, but I thought we could do it in a more harmonious way. These are letting it go all the way to the, the physicality. So, uh, the competition is great. Uh, in, in the locker room. I don't know how it's handling WWE now. I haven't been there in years, but, uh, I think that's something AEW, I, I encourage those guys all the time, go with ideas, stay hungry, contribute to, if you have an issue, it's real easy to be a problem identifier. It's not as easy to be a problem solver. So for your, your own benefit, you're an independent contractor. Wouldn't it be to your advantage to contribute to your own creative and hopefully yeah. that one of those ideas sticks and you get a chance to play it out. I say, yes. So competition is good for the locker room, but you, you'd like to bring harmonious with it. So they're not lonesome. Larry, uh, the story is going to take a big turn here on the third night in this company. Meltzer would say. At 9.38 p.m. Eastern time on his third night with the company, they officially screwed up Goldberg's money-making opportunity by trying to make him Kurt Angle, not realizing it in spite of, not because of their portrayal of Angle, that he's, that's where he's ended up. Raw was simply atrocious. Backstage, Jesse from Tough Enough 2 came in and told Goldberg that one of his relatives was there and in pops gold dust. And someone actually thought that was funny. They exchanged pleasantries, future establishing Goldberg as quote unquote, one of the boys, which is exactly what he should never be. No gold dust got him a, a present, which was a blonde wig and then put it on Goldberg's head. I hope Vince putting 1.5 million in cash in his incinerator is also funny because the end result of each was the same. Goldberg is dead as a draw wow. judging from the ratings. He may have already been dead just because of the standard introduction, but there was a chance and it's done now. I think Goldust soiled his pants to end the segment. 
And listen, when we take a look, if you're watching on YouTube, which is uh grill and JR on youtube.com, you see Goldberg in this blonde wig. And this is a stark contrast from the presentation that made Goldberg a megastar throughout 1998. And that's kind of what we're hoping for. When we bring a talent like this back, we want people to remember, Hey, remember when he was a badass? And then we present this look three weeks in. Well, we tried. What do you think of this execution and, and creative here? Embarrassingly bad. Uh, a more experienced, uh, uh talent would not have lo- allowed his creator to go that direction. Right. I asked you this question. Would stone Colby in that same picture we showed just a second ago with that long blonde wig? No, it would. And, and as a matter of fact, Nobody had the ball. So he pitched something like that to Austin. Well, let me say this. We did see Austin in funny cowboy hats, but yeah. when we were doing that, we weren't drawing money anymore. You right. take a look at stone cold on top. When he was the absolute tippy top draw, he wasn't doing the comedy bullshit. No. And, and, and we, we remember Goldberg as being this badass, and now we're trying to show the lighter side. Well, the reality is Kurt angle can pull that off. It's in his character. He is a great comedic performer, right? But we can't just sort of paint by numbers. Goldberg's never going to be that, right? No, no, he's not. And I, it was just a bad idea It's ill-conceived and, uh, it made no sense. I was embarrassed for bill. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, when he showed on camera with that wig, it's like, what, you know, I'm thinking, I'm trying to look at the, at the glass half full, right? I'm trying to think of, okay, well, maybe this will work because of blank. I couldn't fill in the blank mm-hmm. made no sense to me. So, uh, it, it just, it was just a soiled as in shit, the bed idea. <sighs> well, as if that wasn't enough, we're going to do the rock concert. Meltzer would say the crowd was very much into this loud Goldberg chance. Goldberg came out and was, or Gilbert came out and was really mocking Goldberg. The gimmick was the rock thought Goldberg wasn't coming, but then he showed up. This was a hell of a segment until the conclusion Goldberg ran through security and was throwing them around until the rock laid him out with a rock bottom and left Goldberg jogged slowly and unconvincingly after rock who took off in a Hummer limo Goldberg got in his car and blew out his transmission, which wasn't supposed to happen. So we took off on foot. Boy, did that look dumb. (laughs) Even dumber was rock came back. So he not only beat Goldberg up, but he outsmarted him. And this thing is snake bit from the very jump here. Seems like it does. not I mean, when you take a look at it, we, we tease him at WrestleMania. The ratings are down for the actual debut. It's not quite the spear we were hoping for, but we, we soldier on. The next week we're in a fight with Chris Jericho behind the scenes, which is way more compelling than what we're seeing on camera. And a week after that, we're mocking him with Gilberg and a gold dust wig and the car doesn't start. It seems like we're trying to run him off. Doesn't it? It's like, man, Murphy's law here. If it wasn't for bad luck, he'd have no luck at all. That's a good, let's run a song. Let's do it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well. If you just, if you just categorize all the things you just mentioned, one would assume that we wanted him to get frustrated to say, look, this is not going to work for me. Let's work out something. And I'll just say adios. Right. It, that was not the plan. Uh, and, and again, there were some that I'm sure anytime you bring a talent in this vying for a top spot and a bigger share of the pie, the uh, financial pie, you're going to have some heat. And you're going to have some uncomfortable people because there's only so many spots to go around, uh, on top and, uh, Goldberg seen it was going to be seemingly entrenched in it. Even though I always looked at bill as like a, he signed him for a year at a time. And that way he has closure. He knows closures imminent. And that's important for a guy that's not a lifelong fan and doesn't want to be, uh, you know, doesn't want to be, uh, married to the business. And Billy never wanted to be married to the wrestling business. He's a businessman. He wanted to make money. And, uh, I'll say this, he got better at what he, he he's doing. 
but we saw what the fans wanted him yeah. bouncing around those security guys and being a big, uh, animal. That's what they wanted. But somehow or another, we believed, well, that's what they did in WCW. We're not going to do that. But what they did in WCW worked famously well yes. as it relates to Bill Goldberg. Well said, uh, Meltzer would say that, man, they really need Goldberg to be more aggressive. He has this as a comment after there's a rock concert number two, where, you know, I guess Goldberg's coming back for more punishment verbally, but here comes Goldberg. Christian's even going to attack him. But of course, Goldberg makes the, the comeback with a spear and then rock cracks him with a couple of hard chair shots to the head and a few more to the back. And as he does, so the crowd's going wild cheering the rock for this. It's almost as if, if there was a, a war still the WWF fans, man, they want their guy, not the other team's guys. And that's probably not even the original idea. I mean, Goldberg's supposed to be the baby face in this scenario, but fans are still cheering the rock. And I don't know if that's because there is some tribalism of WWF versus WCW fans, or is it just, Hey man, we perceive the rock to be cool. And Goldberg is just the foil in this scenario. Well, what has rock done Conrad, uh, in this, upon further review, uh, what has the rock done to become a villain? He's just made fun of everybody in the fans. That's all he did that before. Yes. And they love it and they love it. Yes. They loved his style of humor. The rocks comedic timing is, it was on a par with anybody I've ever worked with. Uh, and, 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 you know, that's, that's kind of a new thing because of the, the, uh, talking opportunities that a lot of the talents have now on television. So I don't know what rock did to make this huge turn. That's, uh, diametrically opposed to what he was when he got over. Right. So, you know, uh, and I think the tribalism term you use is spot on Goldberg is still perceived as the big stud from WCW. And we're not going to cheer him because we don't like WCW. We've bought them. We beat them. We bought them out. We did all these things. So I, I don't know, Connie, I think, uh, I think we got in a big hurry there. At least it seems to me like, and, and, uh, didn't let things settle and going right from uh, Goldberg to rock in hindsight. Again, we talked how good that could be. Might not have been the best idea to let them touch and get together that quickly. Again, 24 hours after the biggest star in the history of the company says ADOs. And that's not factored into the psychological equation. Let's talk about the pay-per-view. It's finally going to happen here. Backlash Goldberg versus the rock. It's a sellout in Worcester and Meltzer would say from the management viewpoint of what they were wanting and expecting, they were impressed with the match. Feeling it was the best job of selling Goldberg has ever done in his career. Meltzer would also say the rock is the one who on the match, uh, even with Goldberg getting the pin because rock seemed to think his job in the match was to entertain and lose to Goldberg and make him viable for a return match. But his job was to put Goldberg over and losing and putting someone over are not the same thing. Rock got near falls with both the rock bottom and people's elbow. Fans booed when Goldberg kicked out both times. Goldberg came back with two spears and a jackhammer for the pin as the show went off the air. Meltzer did not like the match, gave it a star and a quarter. Um, the actual pay-per-view numbers come in and it does 349,000 buys, which these days would be considered pretty doggone good. But at that point, it's the lowest of 2003 and it's down from 400,000 the year prior where we didn't have this dream match of Goldberg and rock, man, this is not what we hoped for. It's the lowest buy rate of the year at this point. And I know we could say, well, one of those was Royal rumble and one of those was WrestleMania, but it has to be somewhat of a disappointment. I mean, even no way out was a, was a bigger, bigger success financially, but still that was Hogan and rock. I don't know, man. It doesn't feel like we're off to the, the start. We all hope for, but the well, match, we, still, we weren't, it, 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 yeah. we weren't, on, we weren't off to the right start, the start we wanted. That's obvious. Yeah. That's obvious. Connie, uh, you know, this, you're right. It just wasn't what everybody wanted, but you know, we committed. And so let's go see if we can work this thing out and persevere. 
and maybe with a different opponent other than the rock Goldberg will get over as that massive baby face. You don't know until you try uh, a couple of things we, you, you mentioned that I believe are dangerous trends that we see uh, more often than we need to. And I don't know if the fans are going to agree with this or not, but and that's, but that's their prerogative. You don't have to. And that is, uh, uh, in a match, big match like this, we're talking about with Goldberg and rock that rock that Goldberg, excuse me, rock gets his finishes kicked out of not once, but twice. Yeah. I think that's stupid. That's a trend. Think, you can think about t- t- uh, illustration versus illustration. Same thing with, uh, uh, Goldberg having to use two jackhammers or two spears because this opponent is so deadly and so resilient and strong and powerful and et cetera, et cetera. It takes double to beat him. And I I've always thought that's a very dangerous trend. It just, to me, it makes no sense. You have a hell of a match. You have a knockdown drag out. Uh, you use a million other things other than your go-to final, final, uh, finisher before you use your finisher, you use it one time because it works and you move on. Uh, that's how I would book it. I just don't believe in kicking out of everybody's finish. And then he picks out of all your finishes. Well, you kicked out of two of mine. So I'll kick out of two of yours. You know, bullshit. That's talent trying to protect themselves mm-hmm. instead of protecting the match. We see too much of that in my, in my crotchety old grumpy ass view. Hey, by the way, Conrad, speaking of red ass JR, our hot sauce is selling like crazy. Oh yeah. JR's BBQ.com. I love yeah. a little red ass JR. Oh man. It's, uh, it's better than I, <clears throat> pardon me. It's better than I ever anticipated. I know it's a bad segue, uh, but, uh, I'm very grateful and I, we're getting such good uh, feedback from it too. And I'm going to send you some, because I know you haven't yet. I know, I know Silva hasn't bought it. And he's waiting for his coupon. Oh my goodness. Well, nobody needs a coupon. You're getting great deals every day over at jrsbbq.com. And of course, uh, the, the main event right now is all about the hot sauce, but as for me and mine, we're rocking that seasoning. I had some the other day on some grilled chicken and my wife liberally coated my side or my piece of chicken more than hers. Yeah. But she didn't finish the last couple of bites of hers. She says, Hey, you want the rest of my chicken? And the answer in my house is always, yes, I want the rest of your chicken. Anyway, <laughs> uh, dude, when you really heavy up the coat, which we haven't done before, it's a whole yeah. new experience. I love it. I think you will too. If you haven't already check it out and listen, I know a lot of times when folks order from JR's BBQ.com, they're ordering to display it. They're ordering to throw it up on a shelf and you see all the different product offerings there. If you're watching over on YouTube, but we do have the brand new hot sauce. Don't just buy one bottle, buy two, one to put on a shelf, one to enjoy. And then of course you got the main event mustard, the Chipotle ketchup, two types of barbecue sauce. You got the beef jerky and man, my favorite, I promise I'm not leading you wrong here. You got to try the all purpose seasoning. It's good on everything. And we mean everything, your eggs, your pork, your chicken, your steak. It's a home run at jrsbbq.com. I mentioned before that my granddaughter said, so, hey, grandpa, we found a new, uh, <clears throat> new way to use your seasoning. <clears throat> and I said, well, let me hear it. And they said on popcorn. So they, 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 uh, they seasoned the popcorn up with the all purpose seasoning. The all purpose seasoning originally st- started as a barbecue or smoking rub. And if you watch any of those TV shows, so they show cooking demonstrations and so forth, a lot of real famous, uh, uh, grillers, smokers, and so forth. Uh, they cut, they coat it just like you're saying it adds a little bit, you know, it's more of the product on there. Of course, people say, well, JR wants you to use more. So you buy more. Well, there's something to be said for that. That's truthful, but to, that's the old way of the old coating a piece of protein with, uh, this dry rub seasoning is, uh, is the way to go. It's just, it just, it makes a difference. And you discovered that. And I'm glad you shared it with us. Hey, by the way, I want to give everybody a pro tip too. Uh, if you're over at, at, at jrsbbq.com, you'll also see, and this is a real thing. They've even got JR's action figure over there. So if you've been looking for that and you want to go ahead and grab an action figure, you can, but you can do that maybe at any store. What about an autographed one? 
Jim Ross has autographed a whole bunch of his AEW action figures. They're available now. You can even get autographed trading cards. There's something for everybody at jrsbbq.com. So maybe it's too late for you to get it in time for Christmas with it just being a couple of days away here. But we all know that the Christmas celebration and the gift giving tradition continues through the new year. Go ahead and place these orders. And when you get together with some of your friends or family after the holiday, this will be awesome for the wrestling fan in your life. JRSBBQ.com. You know, I ordered a bunch of those action figures thinking I'd ordered enough. They sold, I sold every one of them signed in about 20 minutes. I believe it. Yeah. So it's really cool. So I, and I'm, I'm grateful for that. So give us a shout. We're working every day there at our site. We're shipping every day and no days off. So, uh, Steven links, uh, ramrodding that doing a good job. And so, uh, but we appreciate everybody's support. So in any event, back to Goldberg, man, he has his first match on raw on May 5th, and he's going to defeat three minute warning in a handicap match. And, uh, that's his very first time wrestling a match on raw. Then he'll wrestle uh Christian in a steel cage match the week after what the hell, why was that? You think a cage match with Christian. Are you, yeah, are you shitting me? What are we doing here? I love me some Christian, but at the time, oh, I do, yeah, I do too. he was not perceived as being a main event player. And, and so for Goldberg to be with him in a steel cage match, illogical, yes. what it is, is illogical and poorly booked having Christian work with Goldberg. I don't have a problem with that whatsoever. No, Jay Russo is a hell of a worker. Yes. And he can make, he can em, embellish and protect Goldberg at every turn in the, in the road, but doggone man, you know, the cage match We just throw that shit out. Like it means nothing. Yes. And, and, and that's the, again, hot shot booking, short term booking. It just, it's, it's totally illogical in, in any era of wrestling. It's never worked long significantly for a long period of time. You just can't hot shot and expect long-term success. You can hot shot and get a one-off success occasionally. No doubt about that, but damn man, a cage match with Christian this quick. I don't know what the hell we're thinking. Well, I know what we're thinking. We're thinking that, uh, this is not working. Meltzer would say we're less than three months into the Goldberg and WWE experiment. And it's doubtful. Many would argue it's been anything but a complete failure, even going in. I don't know anyone who expected it to work in the long run, even though fans were clamoring for a Goldberg versus Brock Lesnar match. And there were big potential dream matches with the rock and triple H that appeared to be easy money. I also didn't know many people who thought if done correctly, it wouldn't work big. The scary part of this failure is that now all excuses go out of the window. The WWE creative side is worse than the WCW creative side. WWE in literally one week took the most talked about non WWE wrestler and stripped him of his aura reputation and drawing power. The man who should have had his salary for the year covered by the increase in buy rate for his first match alone will never have his salary covered no matter what they do for the next year. Man, I think, so that's, I think that's a little drastic to be honest with you. I, I, I can see Meltzer's point of view, Connie, and don't totally disagree with all of it. But he'll never do this and he'll never do that. We, we, we've become very quick to push the button of panic yes. and, and, uh, proclamation. Oh no, this is never going to work. You guys killed him. He's done. Well, good luck with that idea. People have been saying that for decades. And it's, if you get somebody hot, the right angle, right opponent, uh, you're, you're cool. It's a matter of finding that formula, finding that answer. So that was, that's kind of where we were on that deal, but uh, in any event. Go ahead. Well, I'm just curious from your perspective. Like, I, I think we agree that this is not going well, right? But there's going to be plenty of blame to go around. People are going to start pointing fingers in your perspective. Are we pointing the finger at Goldberg for this, not being a huge success, or are we pointing the finger at creative because some of the comedy, it does feel like maybe this is the stuff that Brian has done and done well for other talent. Maybe it's not understanding who Goldberg is. Maybe it's Vince doing what a lot of people perceive Vince to do and just say, I can do what I want. You work here now and this will be fun. And it doesn't feel as if this is very, uh, fair to blame all on Goldberg. Can't 
You can't yeah. con rest. It's like blaming uh, the Crimson Tide for losing a big bowl game on the plays called by the quarterback who doesn't even call the plays. Right. You can't do that. It's just, it's illogical and it didn't make any sense. So, uh, to blame Goldberg, I, I thought, you know, you made a comment earlier about Goldberg it was in that, that match and was selling. Well, he was getting better yes. fundamental things. He started acquiring the skill set, and, and a big guy like that, he's got to learn how to sell for his look and his size and all those things. Selling with your head up. So people can see your face, not over dr- dr- dramatizing it. And making it sell on different levels so that people can go on that trip with you. So, uh, I couldn't blame, I wouldn't not in, the, in my wildest dreams would I blame Goldberg for the lack of success in that creative, uh, you can blame him for execution, I guess. Maybe he could have been a better, uh, executioner, so to speak, not the Terry Gordy version of the executioner, but the executioner of, uh, execution of a, of a match. So, you know, I, I don't know, man, I, I, creator has got to take a huge, uh, amount of responsibility for this one. Sometimes you, in your, in your, uh, zeal to get somebody over, uh, you book them in a sense of urgency manner. And unfortunately, more often than not, that sense of urgency includes doing things that that talent is not comfortable doing or hasn't perfected doing like selling or other things like that. So. Uh, and, and the thing you keep away from Goldberg is real simple. I don't want Goldberg doing comedy. Right now. What is it about that? You don't understand. So we can get that cleared up and in, in here in this, in this creative meeting, Goldberg doesn't do comedy. Goldberg is not Kurt Goldberg is not stone cold or rock. He's a different piece. And that doesn't mean he's failure. It just right. means he's different. And so understand his shortcomings. And, and don't play to them, play to something else, play to his strengths. Paul Heyman uh, was very good at ECW about, uh, back in the day about, uh, hiding like talents, the positives, hide the negatives. Yeah. Yeah. And, that, and Booker's, uh, you know, cowboy did that cowboy mm-hmm. had a lot of big guys. I remember Ray candy was one of the Ernie, Ernie lad brought in big African-American guy, hell of a nice guy, but he was limited on what he could do. And when Cowboy saw how Ernie was trying to book him to make him more athletic and take more bumps and things like that, Cowboy uh, interjected because it was a situation where we're trying to get this guy to play a position that he's not uh, skilled at. So take the, take some of the bumps out, make the bumps be less and they will mean more. And it worked perfectly. It worked. It was just fine. So then when big uh, Ray candy, who was well over 300 pounds got body slammed or taken off his feet. It was a successful spot. It meant more. Yeah. It meant more because you didn't see him all the time. You saw it was part of the, it was part of the comeback or whatever. So it was, uh, it was, uh, it's just common sense. And I don't think we'd use a lot of common sense to how we book Goldberg. Meltzer would say that, uh, the nerve started to fray on both sides and it led to a dressing room situation on June 9th involving Goldberg, Vince McMahon and Chris Jericho. And Meltzer sort of freestyles that it really started when Goldberg put on the wig. And after that, they did one thing with him. Well, which is where he speared Rosie through the barricades, but the promos building to the match didn't get Goldberg over with the rock. The first pay-per-view match he feels was booked too long. And now we get to this situation quote, sketchy details are available of everything that went down over the past week, but it is known that Vince McMahon. At an agent's meeting last week was very negative on Goldberg. This apparently came right after problems surfaced regarding Goldberg and the insurrection pay-per-view Goldberg had not been booked on the show at some point earlier in the last week, decisions were changed and they decided to do Goldberg and Kevin Nash versus Chris Jericho and triple H as the main event. Goldberg was asked to do the match and apparently agreed, but noted that he was injured and willing to go through it. Whoever spoke with him then told him not to bother. And the card was changed and Scott Steiner was put in his place. Decisions were changed again. And he was asked again to go to England. This time he was more negative about it since he'd first been told he was being replaced. He ended up not going, which was part of the reason the card was changed five times in the last week. 
whether this was done out of spite or stupidity, the script for raw on June 9th was going to bury Goldberg before his match with Jericho. The original script was for Goldberg versus Rosie as an opener ending with a spear and jackhammer in two minutes, which is what happened. And in the post-match Jericho was supposed to do something that would injure Goldberg's legitimately hurt right hand. The idea is they would go backstage. Goldberg would see a doctor who would tell him to go to the hospital rather than trying to stay for revenge on Jericho and in totally bearing babyface psychology, Goldberg would then leave and go to the hospital. The plan was for him to return and do the interview with Terry, as opposed to going after Jericho and then get laid out one more time by Jericho. When Goldberg showed up and got the script, he refused. All parties involved had to work out a compromise where Goldberg wouldn't look as bad. And Jericho ended up watching the match from a chair at ringside, which made little sense since Jericho had speared Goldberg threw yellow paint on his car, made a fool out of him, causing him to injure Charles Robinson all in the last two weeks. Instead of going after Jericho, he did his match with Rosie and he did thwart Jericho's attempt at interference, but didn't do the injury angle. And in the segment where he did the interview, Jericho hit him with a chair, but Goldberg got up and smiled, basically no selling it, which was the agreed on compromise. And it did far more for the match than the original plan, which would have been disastrous. And the commotion backstage for all this was said to be significant enough that everyone knew about it. There's also a second issue as Jericho talked with Goldberg about their bad blood match. Apparently there's an issue over the finish itself. Since the plan is still for Goldberg to go over clean and set up SummerSlam against triple H the original plan where Goldberg would get the title is probably far less of a lock than it was just two weeks ago. Apparently in exchange for putting Goldberg over Jericho wanted to kick out of the spear, noting that the rock did it before falling victim to a second spear followed by a jackhammer and Goldberg refused saying to Jericho something that along the lines of, well, you're not the rock. Well, nobody will say so publicly. It does appear the company has given up on Goldberg and perhaps wishes it could get out of the deal. While Goldberg himself has done nothing out of the ordinary and at times has shown less fire than was needed. Almost all the blame on this has to be put on creative Jim. When you take a look at the decisions here, it's, it's hard not to side with Goldberg on all this. It does feel like, man, they're not handling him right. Right. Yeah, you can, blame, <clears throat> excuse me. You can blame me for some of it. No doubt. Uh, but all of it, obviously, no, not the majority, not even close. Uh, you go all the way back to the starting of this program between rock and Goldberg. Yeah. It started off wrong. Yeah. We rushed it. You know, and to think that our audience all knew and were devoted Goldberg fans, uh, was a misnomer. We overstated his, his value in as much as at one time, if, if we had gotten him coming out of, uh, right out, out when he was hot, then I think maybe we had a better shot at getting him over, but the, the bloom was off the rose, so to speak. He had to be rebuilt and reintroduced. We didn't do any of that. We didn't rebuild him and we didn't reintroduce him the right way. So, uh, and he's following orders on creative. So creative has got to take a, a, a responsibility for that. At least that's my take on it. And, uh, but it, it never got off. Right. Never started. Right. It's hard to make something incorrectly Conrad when it doesn't start correctly. Well, it could be done. It could be done. Right. Yes. But you know, uh, and, and this, this, that sentence there, uh, Jericho wanted to kick out of the spear. See what I'm saying about how that spreads like wildfire. Yeah. So what does it mean next week? What's it mean in subsequent commentary? What does it mean? You know, at the, at the end of the proverbial day, when you kick out of a guy's finish, are you gonna make a story out of it? Or is it just a spot to appease the guy that's doing the kicking out? I don't know. How pissed off do you think Chris Jericho was when Goldberg said, you're not the rock? Well. I mean, it's a fact, but still it's not something anybody wants to hear. No, 
Well, that's not the way you, that's not a team way of to, to, to approach it. Uh, yeah. No. I mean, Billy's been in a team. God damn. He played for Georgia. Right. He, he's a division one. He was a big time player in the sec. He's been in locker rooms. He played for Vince Dooley. He, he knows what, you know, he knows the right way and the wrong way to talk to teammates. And that was the wrong way. Yes. If you want to, you know, Goldberg has got to realize too, that Chris Jericho could, could end up being a great ally for him because the more matches Goldberg and Jericho have together, the better Jericho is going to make Goldberg look and help get Goldberg over what she direly needed. So Bill didn't do himself any favors on that one whatsoever. I, I was very disappointed in that little dialogue. Well, something you won't be disappointed in is our friends at camper max. They're specializing in max discounted pricing on travel trailers and fifth wheel RVs delivered anywhere in the lower 48. That's right. Right from your office, your cell phone, or even your couch. You can click or call and find out how easy it is to start enjoying the RVing lifestyle. How easy is it? Well, the camper max discount will fit any budget. Offering easy financing with extended terms. It's just too easy to visit CamperMax.com. That's C-A-M-P-E-R-M-A-X-X.com. CamperMax with two X's. CamperMax.com. Or our friends a shout at 256-320-7033. The fine folks behind CamperMax are uh, longtime friends of the program. Be sure to let them know that we sent you by using the promo code Conrad. Just mention my name. They'll give you that friend of a friend deal. The home of the max discount campermax.com. And by the way, if you're looking to purchase a motorhome, hang in there. My buddy Rod Wagner is working on that now. Maybe you're looking to sell your fifth wheel or travel trailer. Even does that. Whatever you need for that RVing lifestyle, CamperMax is your hookup camper maxx.com or give him a shout 256-320-7033 Jim let's get back and talk about how uh the Goldberg thing is even making investment calls I can't believe this is a real deal but Linda McMahon is on the uh the financials conference call the investor call if you will and here's the write-up here quote Linda McMahon claimed they were getting creative in order after which Roger Schaefer said You've been just like WCW with the old retreads and not pushing newer talent. When talking about the promises and previous calls of creative improving, he said, quote, it's not happening. And Linda responded by saying the company brought back Bill Goldberg, but that he was, this is an exact quote from Linda McMahon, disappointing compared to what we expected him to be. I can't believe that's a real quote, but Linda McMahon said it again. In regards to bringing back Goldberg, he was quote unquote disappointing compared to what we expected him to be. That's the full quote. She was telling the truth, but man, it might've might been, uh, it not, might not have been as timely as one would would like considering that you're dealing with a talent's ego and, uh, how they were going to respond or the other talents might respond. This is just not a one talent deal here. If that's uh, at least that's my take. But uh, she was just telling the truth, Connie, as well hurtful, as, as stinging as it was and as ill-timed as it could arguably be, arguably have been, uh, it was the truth. I don't think it was the truth. Let me explain. You don't think, think she was, dis- he don't think he was disappointing. I don't think he was disappointing. I think the execution of his return was disappointing. Oh, me too. So, but what I'm saying is to say disappointing compared to what we, meaning WWE expected him being W Goldberg to be like the, the disappointing is that the disappointment is in the execution of the Goldberg character, not necessarily in his efforts, not necessarily in his I, presentation. I, I agree. I agree yeah. wholeheartedly. His efforts were not lacking. Uh, you know, Meltzer had a comment about, uh, you know, some of the things he Bill was doing or, you know, what you know, wasn't executed this. When did Bill Goldberg ever execute perfectly? Right. That was that part of his tag. Yeah. Part of his charm. Yes. Somewhat of un- unpredictability and so forth. So, uh, I, I understand where your point is and you make a very good point as usual, because she did a deep dive. Oh, goodness. Gracious. And he had a uh, little, little Wikipedia man, Dave Silva, so, standing <laughs> enjoying uh, a, del- 
enjoying a delicious breakfast taco. God damn, I'd like to have one of those right now, this very minute. Let's get around to three. Let's yeah, do them. Uh, we're going to, for the next 60 seconds, we're going to watch JR and Conrad eat. <laughs> yeah, we got to get so, a for that. I'm for it. Yeah, let's do that. So uh, Goldberg and Jericho are going to hook up at Bad Blood. They're going to have a good match, but Meltzer would point out if Goldberg was defending the title against Jericho, it would have been perfect. But with Goldberg striving to get to the title, it should have been much more of a WCW scenario with a short match and very explosive. And I guess we should just take a time out right there, right now. You know, what it, what did get Goldberg over were quick, for lack of a better word, squash matches. And that's not what we're trying here. Just off the jump, are we missing the boat by not giving people what they have grown accustomed to seeing with them? I mean, having competitive matches with the rock and Jericho. I get is very much the WWE way, but if we're trying to build Goldberg up for the world title, he should just be running through dudes. Should he not? You got to stay close to that formula that worked. Yeah. The issue was it was a WCW formula. And for some insane reason over the years, uh, repeating, uh, WCW's history, uh, hasn't worked in WWE very well. And I, part of that was because of Vince's commitment to the angle. And he wanted things to be original in his creation. And, uh, that was not the way to go on this one. The formula was so simple. That'd be like telling Austin, okay, you got cleared. You're coming back to work, but we don't want you to use the spear. And we sure as fuck don't want you to drink any beer. Well, first of all, Austin would never have gone for that. Right. And secondly, it was a, it's, a, it's an insanely ridiculous uh, statement to make. And that, so what worked will still work if it's executed, if it's, if it's sampled, if it's dis displayed out there, but, uh, it was, it, it made no sense. It, it just made no, so many missteps in this whole Goldberg scenario. And it's unfortunate because like I said, he's not a bad human being whatsoever. It's amazing to me when you take a look at all the WCW properties that Vince McMahon got his hand on and how it feels like it just doesn't work out. Like. I think most people assumed the invasion angle is the biggest no brainer, biggest money making angle in the history of wrestling bungled the NWO. Well, shit, this can't miss. I mean, we've got the thing that really set this whole business on fire bungled and then Goldberg, the, the former dream match who would win Austin versus Goldberg when we're all at our height, 1998, 1999 business has never been bigger. The two biggest stars. Goldberg's bungled too. Like, was it almost a subconscious, maybe point of pride with Vince? And and Bruce would take great issue with this. Like, why would we spend all this money and want it to fail? But it does feel as if, if it wasn't Vince's idea, inherently, he's not going to like it as well because he gets his hand on these big talents and then just doesn't connect. Yeah, uh, I, I agree with Bruce in large large part, you know, we, we spent a lot of money on Goldberg, right? That was a huge investment. So hell no, we didn't want it to fail. No. Uh, and so Bruce is right on that deal. Mark that down. He's right as hell. So, uh, I'm not saying he consciously said, man, I want Goldberg to fail. He didn't build. Here's the thing, Connie. I think I can put it better this way. Okay. Vince didn't, he didn't make the commitment uh, to Goldberg that he had made to a guy like say a guy like Austin or rock, even triple H Mick Foley reluctantly, but he got there. It's just, it's just his nature. He really wanted to be the guy that, that, to, you know, he shuffle, he re, he wants, he always wants the ability or wanted the ability to reshuffle the deck. And, uh, sometimes the deck doesn't need to be reshuffled. It just doesn't. And I think that's the case here. You know, Vince could not make a full hundred percent unabashed commitment to Goldberg, uh, because he didn't create Goldberg and what Goldberg had, had, how Goldberg had been presented was just fine. Again, give WCW some credit. Yeah. Uh, they, they didn't screw up everything for God's sakes. They didn't, no, they, had a hell of, they beat our ass 83 weeks in a row. I heard about that on a podcast somewhere. Yes, you did. So there you go. So let's talk about it. We know that we're going to have triple H versus Goldberg as the main event officially announced at SummerSlam. It goes down in a press conference on July 22nd. There's a couple hundred fans here to actually watch the press conference. 
Triple H is going to talk about Goldberg saying he's not in a small pond where 176 people were set up to lose to him. It would also run down Goldberg's win over the rock saying, eh, he beat a rock who's spending his time in Hollywood. I beat the rock when he was at his best. And the previous night is the first time they're ever in the ring together in San Jose. And the match Meltzer would say is almost cursed because triple H's leg wasn't doing well. So he's not able to run the ropes. And Goldberg's arm, his left arm, is heavily bandaged from an operation he had to remove an infection. It just feels as if, man, we're five months into this thing, and if it wasn't for bad luck, he'd have no luck at all. Yeah. Eventually, though, it does feel like the problems between Hunter and Goldberg are settled. Meltzer had this to say. Any problems between the two were settled almost as soon as Goldberg first got in the WWE locker room. Triple H proposed a program with him, talked about working together and made it clear he'd have no problems losing if Goldberg would agree to return the favor and the match at SummerSlam sadly, or maybe not sadly never takes place. Triple H ends up with a slightly torn groin and Hunter would be sitting out of the show and, uh, now it gets changed to an elimination chamber match. So instead of this being Goldberg's big crowning moment to beat the world champion, Boy, I hate the way this sounds, but it's positioned as he's, he's maybe just another guy. He's going to be taking on Hunter, Kevin Nash, Chris Jericho, Shawn Michaels, and Randy Orton. Don't get me wrong. All first ballot hall of famers, all incredible talent. Yep. But it does feel like it's less about one man's journey to become the champion again. And well, look at all this star power. That's what the injuries will do for you. Yes. That picture we're showing on the screen. Now, if you're watching it on our YouTube channel is, uh, indicative of that uh you know kevin nash uh, has had injury issues uh triple h was, was documented documented to he was it was bona fide hurt goldberg bona fide hurt it's lucky we got the match in the ring whatsoever and it may have been an opportunity here connie to uh elevate another talent a younger talent, right? Randy Orton and, and, and let, let some of these guys I, I mentioned be the guys that help put Randy over to get him over. So that, that, that would have been one potential solution, but when you got a, a, a match, uh, with this many participants in one match, it has, uh, train wreck capabilities, bowling shoe, ugly qualities, if you will. And then you add the injury issues for guys that are limited on what they can do or what they can't do. Uh, it's a, like I said, I think we're lucky just to get that damn main event in the ring. Let's talk a little bit about, um, triple H's injury. When, when, when he goes down, the company asked Goldberg to go to Australia as a replacement, as a last minute deal. And I think you make the call to, to him, to ask him to do this. Mm -hmm. And he agrees to go on the tour. And he's really going to be agreeing to do more than his contracted number of dates for the month because he recognizes, Hey man, their top guy just went down, but he notes to you guys, Hey man, my passport's in San Diego. So I'd have to fly there because he's in Atlanta at the time, rather than I can just fly straight to Australia. Cause I didn't bring my passport and why would he, he doesn't think he needs yeah. it in Atlanta. Right. Uh, and this would have maybe meant that he's going to miss the first show, but that turns out to be a moot point. According to Meltzer, the company had to take out working visas on all talent several weeks earlier. And since Goldberg wasn't scheduled, no visa was ever taken out in his name. The company was unable to get him a working visa on such short notice. So he doesn't go on the tour, but Hey man, it is a cool sign that when the, when the call was made, yeah. Goldberg, can you help us out? He said, hell yeah, I'm in. Yeah. I, that was a good conversation. And like I said, and I, maybe I was, the, the remnants of this, uh, statement are, have been dotted throughout this uh, show today. You know, I, I always got along well with Goldberg. I still do. You know, I, I were that old Oklahoma connection is uh, something it's hard to his home. He's a homeboy for me. You know, uh, I have family that still lives in Tulsa and, and I worked in Tulsa and I started my career in Tulsa and Billy was the biggest football star of that era coming out of Oklahoma. I mean, a hell fire, man. He turned down Barry Switzer, uh, to go to Georgia and I'm not knocking Georgia. My God, they're 
you know, they're apparently the best team in college football right now. So somebody proves us wrong. So, uh, in any event, he's, uh, he was, uh, he was good to, he was good. If you talk to him sensibly and conversa in a conversational tone, he wasn't hard to communicate with whatsoever. Right. And that goes for most people, most people. And, uh, he was no different than anybody else. I, uh, always, and I still have great respect for bill, bill, bill did really well in this business. He's made himself a lot of money, man. A lot of, at a, at, at a later age, he didn't make it when he was in his twenties. And he made his biggest money when he was in his, his what? Thirties and forties. Yes. So uh, I, I admire that. That's, that's the entrepreneurial spirit. That's pretty damn cool. Actually, given the current pay structure, he may have made his biggest money in his fifties. Uh, anyway, yeah, there you well, go. You're no, you're out about that. If you, if you, if you, if you factor in Saudi Arabia, yeah, then free money over there. That's big money. Uh, SummerSlam comes and what do you know? Goldberg doesn't win the world title. Instead, he slips during his entrance. Vince Chris Jericho, Randy Orton, and Shawn Michaels, but then takes a sledgehammer shot from triple H when he's going for a spear. That's one, two, three Hunter retains, man. It's just doomsday. When he slips during the entrance, it just feels like God dang, man. But then, Hey, we do everything we can. We pin Chris Jericho. We pin Randy Orton. We pin Shawn Michaels. <laughs> it's not the big, great moment we were hoping for making him the world champ. Yeah. Sledgehammer shot. We're done. And the next night on raw Hunter agrees to give Goldberg a one-on-one -on -one match at unforgiven. But only if Goldberg puts his career on the line. Now, this to me feels like we're in fast forward. We're, what are we doing here? Or, or we're rushing an angle. Yes. And unnecessarily, quite frankly. I mean, to celebrate Goldberg's uh, uh, variety of victories over the talents that he defeated that we just documented is pretty damn extraordinary. Uh, we should have done more of that. And uh, Triple H got out by the skin of his teeth. Uh, he and his trusty sledgehammer and I don't getting beat by a sledgehammer to me. Don't, oh, you got his first loss. Okay. Fuck. Come on. Yeah. You know, I don't, I don't know. I told the guys this before USA today, when they were a real newspaper, uh, and were being read by everybody, nobody reads the newspaper anymore. It didn't seem like, or at least that often, uh, well, that's another topic for the day, but in any, in any event, uh, he, he's, uh, a loss is like a good beat with a sledgehammer should add more fuel to the fire of seeing these two guys go one-on-one, -on -one. but why did we have to add the retirement stipulation? I don't understand that. So, uh, it was just rushed booking that should not have been executed. Let's talk about unforgiven. They make it happen. Goldberg is going to beat Hunter Hearst Helmsley to, uh, win the world title in just under 15 minutes. Goldberg is, uh, in there with a, a still injured triple H he's got a slightly torn groin. He's going to try to gut it out. And Meltzer would say that there's a saying you can do this the easy way or the hard way. And in this case, he felt like it was the easy way or the smart way or the dumb way quote. Well, the dumb way was going to pacify the ego of the boyfriend. And if you thought anything different would happen. And of course we're referencing the fact that Hunter is of course in a relationship with Stephanie and perhaps this wasn't the type of match that fans wanted. And I kind of agree. Meltzer would describe it. And it's hard to argue. The match was too long and dull. I don't think anybody wanted to see a 15 minute Goldberg match. And I realize Hunter maybe didn't want to do a, a 38 second squash. I get that. Compromise he, Conrad compromise. Yeah. Go tell a compelling story in six or eight minutes, including entrances. You get caught with a guy's finisher. He beats everybody with it. And tonight he beat you simple and, and just go out. All they were doing is putting in time and unnecessarily it's okay to put in time. If you're Shawn Michaels and triple H or Randy Orton and triple H or some of these other cats, Jericho, all those guys, but Goldberg is not that guy. He it needed to be more succinct, a little bit more Shakespeare, a little bit more drama and then boom, uh, Goldberg found his way to get that spear in or the jackhammer and call it a night simple deal. 
and we could tell that story on the commentary side. We could we'd protect triple H. I always protected triple H in these matches. People think that, you know, I, they, I get to see these clips all the time on Twitter, you know, well, JR really hated triple H. I, uh, to the contrary, I had great respect for him. I signed him on sitting on an anvil case in Evansville, Indiana. I, I want him to be a success. We needed him to be a success. So, uh, uh, I, I, but I, I don't, we just rush things and, and that's, that program could have gone on for easily for a year, but in that time frame, and Bruce might, he might not, not agree with this, but I think he might as if I gave a shit, I'm kidding. <laughs> Ross says he doesn't give a shit. What Pritchard says headline dateline JR's bedroom in Jacksonville. <laughs> uh, so, you know, I, I think that, uh, I, I just, it was just, it was mishandled from the day one, this whole Goldberg investment. And that's how I looked at all these guys. Conrad, if Buck differently, don't you agree? Or do you agree that Goldberg would have been a successful headliner for a WrestleMania if he was introduced correctly? Absolutely. Case closed, your honor. Well, unfortunately it doesn't happen. Instead, we're just going to try to limp along here. The night after, uh, the loss that Hunter takes, he's going to take uh, a bit of a break, not injury related, but movie and wedding related. So now raw is essentially Goldberg show. And the night after he wins the world title, he kills Eric Bischoff with a spear and stone cold, Steve Austin endorses him. So, you know, we're trying to do what we can. And in the main event, Goldberg beats Jericho in a match that Meltzer said, quote, should have been what Hunter did the night before while Hunter's away. It's a typical old school heel stuff. He's going to announce there's a hundred thousand dollar bounty on Goldberg's head while he's away. And one of the people looking to cash in is Mark Henry. They go five minutes and, uh, of course, Mark Henry. Uh, is dispensed with, but this is maybe the first time it looks like Mark Henry got a real shot, you know, touching the main event like this. Yeah. Goldberg, he got shoved, he got shoved into the spotlight by unusual means or, or unusual routing. Uh, but you know, the, uh, the publicity picture of Mark Henry versus Goldberg, uh, would turn my head and it did turn my head. Let's talk about, uh, Sean Michaels, it looks like we're going to be building towards uh, a circumstance there with Goldberg and Sean Michaels when Goldberg accidentally spears Sean after the match. And, you know, these are two baby faces at this point. Uh, Henry is going to put Goldberg through a door and there's doubt Goldberg will be able to make it, but he does. He spears the ref by accident because it seems like he can never spear the guy he's supposed to. He eats a super kick before Batista hits the ring and spine busters, Michaels and Batista bombs Goldberg and puts his ankle in a chair and jumps on it to break it. <laughs> He's joining evolution as a new major heel. So listen, this is an excellent way to sort of establish Batista as a, as a big time player and, you know, brush him up against the main event, but baby face versus baby face. It feels again, as if we're asking the WWF loyal fans you know, long timers their whole life. I'm a WWF guy and not a WCW guy. Well, they're always going to pull for Shawn Michaels over Goldberg. Are they not? Oh yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Uh, I still believe, and I may be sounding, uh, oh, really old school. Uh, and no, you know, and I, I'm not smart enough to sound like Jim Cornette cause he's much smarter than me. That's all. That's not being facetious. God damn it. Conrad, you son of a bitch. You know, smarter than Jr. Ric Flair said it. Uh, <laughs> life is so much fun. Uh, I don't know where I was. I, I go for these fucking tangents. Oh, Batista. Well, we're just trying to get healthy bodies. And Dave was a, he looked great, you know, yes. and all that stuff. And he had, a, he had, he, he was just, it was his time. Uh, so, but I, I, I like what we did with Hunter while, while he was away. Uh, I really did. I thought it was. I thought old it was, school. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It was old school. It kept him visible when he wasn't there. It kept his presence felt when he wasn't there. And that's just good booking. That's just good booking. So, and I'm sure Hunter probably came up with the idea. Uh, a, a, a great talent will do that. 
now that he's been speared by Goldberg, Eric Bischoff wants to strip Goldberg of the title. Austin won't let him. Goldberg's going to return to save Steve Austin from Batista and a match is made for the go home raw for survivor series survivor series. Of course, is where we're going to get this Hunter Goldberg rematch. Hunter returns on that raw to save Batista after two minutes. And now we're ready for survivor series. Goldberg retains in 11 minutes and 44 seconds. He powers out of a pedigree. He teases hitting Hunter with a sledgehammer, but instead throws it out of the ring spear jackhammer. And Meltzer gives it two and a half stars. And Meltzer would say, if they had introduced him like this, they would have done big business. Ding, 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 ding for Dave. Yep. And what do we have any loaded, lovely parting gifts for Dave this week, ladies and gentlemen? We have some car wax and some manscape. Well, actually what we have is some Jimmy's famous seafood at jimmy.com. Listen, if there's one thing JR and I know, it's good eating. And when it Damn comes right, brother. to cakes, when it comes to the best crab cakes in the whole dog on world, it's Jimmy Seafood.com. That was Jan and Jan and I used to have little favorite meals that we'd get uh, on mail order or, or online, whatever the term the cool term is. Uh, I've ordered so many times in Jimmy's since I should have everything memorized by now. Uh, I love that place. The friendliness, the family, yes, just wonderful people. They support pro wrestling like nobody else. Yes. But I'll tell you, pal, uh, those crab cakes are, they're orgasmic. I mean, these son of bitches are the best ever. And, uh, she used to put them under the broiler the last minute or two or three minutes or it was crisp them up, crisp them up a little bit. And man, that was a big treat for us. We, uh, we loved that meal. So. You, you, if anybody's a wrestling fan, you've heard of Jimmy seafood in Baltimore. Yes. You have to. And, and if you ask a lot of the top stars in the business, no matter what company they work for, where's the plate or your favorite place to eat on the road, Jimmy seafood, no brainer. Jimmy's famous seafood. See what all the fuss is about. Little pro tip that Eric Bischoff enjoys. Throw the car- the crab cakes on the grill. Get a little flame kissed on those dudes. He, he described it as uh, like touching God in the face. Uh, <laughs> they ship food nationwide here at Jimmy's Famous Seafood.com. Now, if you've ever ordered really nice, high quality food like this, you know, and the expense is in the shipping. What if we got you free shipping? Yeah, baby. Free two day nationwide shipping on orders over 125 when you use the promo code Jim Ross. You got Maryland crab cakes, the soups, the chowders, the oysters, the steaks, the desserts. And it makes an excellent gift. If you're still doing some last minute shopping, you're going to get together after the holiday with some folks. Let me recommend the famous gift box. Four of the world's best colossal Maryland crab cakes. Two different crab soups, a crab dip, seafood seasoning, their signature bay sauce. They even got a tailgate bundle if you're in the mood to go bowling. Got two pounds of wings, a full rack of ribs. Yeah. Crab dip, crab cake mix, everything you're looking for. It is the place to be if you're a wrestling fan. It's also been all over TV. Beat Bobby Flay, diners, dine ins, and dives, and so much more. It's a <laughs> legacy heritage building. I mean, we're talking like generations of family members here. It's a 10 out of 10. It's my favorite restaurant in America. I'm not exaggerating. I love it. Food, it's about the people, it's about the service. It's Jimmy's famous seafood.com and use that promo code Jim Ross. Yeah, sometimes you get tired of turkey or you yes. get tired of chicken or this spiral ham. I haven't found those days yet, but I'm sure they'll come in if I keep eating it. Uh, but I love uh, I love Jimmy's. It's a, it's a it's a change of pace. It's a, I'm telling you, I, I've never had I won't even hardly order crab cakes if I'm not at Jimmy's because I don't want to be, I don't want to be disappointed because. Nobody else's trick cap cakes hold up to that standard and free well, shipping, yeah. free shipping is a, is a great gift. And you know, I know this probably isn't kosher, but I've been known to put a little JR seasoning on those crab cakes. when I'm cooking them and I, uh, get a little crazy down there. If you know what I'm saying? There you go. Check it out. Jimmy's famous seafood.com. The promo code is Jim Ross. I don't know for sure, but I feel like this song was in the movie Anchorman. Uh, really? Yeah, Silva, he's got Is he he's dancing got again? Down, out right now. Well, thankfully, he's not on camera, but I can imagine he is. 
Jimmy's famous seafood.com promo code Jim Ross. You'll be dancing. Let me taste these new crab cakes. Woo. Best in the business. Best in the business. All right. Speaking of big business, we get it. Goldberg's going to interrupt the Brock Lesnar interview and introduce himself to him. Of course, everybody sees money in it, but somehow the feud between Hunter and Goldberg has Kane added to it. After he choke slams Goldberg in an Armageddon, it's now a three way for the title. Uh, I mean, we see the tease there of what could have been, but we quickly pivot. If you're watching on YouTube to this three-way opportunity, mm-hmm. it creates another opponent for Goldberg Two uh, big heels that people believed in have been there for the singly for the duration. So all that, that booking was to put the baby face at a distinct disadvantage being out, man, essentially two to one. And you would think, well, certainly neither Goldberg or Hunter are going to take the loss here. I mean, if you add a three way, it's so you can beat the other guy. Nay, nay. Armageddon sees Hunter win the world title after 20 minutes. It's a star in three quarters. According to Meltzer, <sighs> goodness gracious. Batista pulls Kane out of the ring. Triple H is able to pin Goldberg and that comes off flat. According to Meltzer, as he describes it to the fans and we see the presentation as the pay-per-view goes off the air. There's evolution and what it will be. Randy Orton, Ric Flair, Dave Batista, and of course, Hunter Hearst Helmsley. And this seems like it might be too much for Bill, all according to the torch. Quote, McMahon was strongly considering a Goldberg versus Lesnar champion versus champion match at WrestleMania 20 just a few weeks ago. And now there's doubt whether Goldberg will even be a part of that show. Sunday night after the Armageddon pay-per-view, Goldberg had yet another tantrum far from his first over the way he had been treated by the company. He was upset because he felt Kane and triple H were trying to make him look bad during their main event match quote. He thought they were trying to eat him up out there in quote, says one wrestler. He's felt that way numerous times about his matches in WWE, having gotten used to a completely dominant on offense style when he was with WCW. Nevertheless, after the match, Goldberg became a raging maniac. According to one source, he even threw a table backstage. It was considered by management strike two in a sense that if he has such an outburst again, he'll be sent home before his contract even expires. And the next day at raw Goldberg's going to meet with Vince McMahon and express regret for how he handled himself the night before. He said, he's been frustrated with a number of things concerning his wrestling career right now. And it all came to a head on Sunday. He's frustrated with his pay, not topping the $1.5 million downside. He was given on the one year contract that was signed just after WrestleMania last year, because the house shows haven't been drawing with him in main event slots. It's knocked down his reputation as being a top draw, something he believed was the case in WCW, even when he no longer had any special TV ratings, drawing power during his final year or so of the company. And sources say Goldberg feels quote unquote inadequate among his peers. And it seems like he doesn't fit in. He isn't an outcast, but he does see himself surrounded by colleagues who grew up following the business, worked hard to get where they are and wanting to succeed in wrestling almost more than anything else in life. And he's there because he happens to have a look and intensity that made him an early success. Man. Oh man. If you had it to do over again, would you have beaten Goldberg in the three way with Kane and Hunter at Armageddon? Did it make sense for the story? Did you feel like we were taking the the momentum off of Goldberg? What do you, we, we beat him once with a sledgehammer. Yes. We beat him again with a low blow. So protecting the baby face, uh, I thought was adequate and yeah. how he lost. Uh, it's it just, it was to me, it, it was okay. Uh, and it worked in that respect of protecting the baby face and how he lost. He didn't lose with the pedigree. He didn't lose with the choke slam. He lost with a, a ball shot in this particular situation. Uh, but again, I don't, you know, I don't remember it, We, we didn't do a great job of managing Goldberg. Uh, you know, I tried, everybody tried, I think, but he needed more maintenance. He needed more coaching. He needed more positive reinforcement. He needed more leadership. And, uh, I don't know that he was provided that. So it sounds like I'm defending him and I am to a certain degree, 
Now, throwing chairs and tables and bullshit backstage and acting like a kid, unprofessional, there's no excuse for that. None whatsoever. Uh, but uh, he was, he, he needed, you know, you find this out, Conrad, and a lot of guys, in my experience or, 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 of recruiting and signing talent, is, uh, you know, these, these are the guys that come from a mainstream athletic environment. They're used to coaching. Goldberg's been coached his entire life since he was in junior high school playing football and then on to be a high school, all American had a coach, several coaches. Then he went to Georgia, had coaches, great coaches. And, uh, I don't know what kind of coaching he got in WCW, but I think better than probably some people thought, uh, but they, they, back, they, he needed it over time. He, I think that he needed to slowly, and maybe he did, he did. And I'm just, I was busy on Monday nights and I did, wasn't watching. Uh, but he needed to extend some of his matches, same formula, but extend the matches. So the, the fans could get a little bit more con content from him. But that again, was one of the many flaws in how Goldberg was booked. And if Goldberg had the product knowledge of saying Austin. He'd know what not to do, what not to go for, what to suggest to do something different. And, uh, it just wasn't the case. By the way, I think, uh, is it as we record this, is it today Stone Cold's birthday? Uh, I'm not sure. Or is that right? Let's, let's take a look here. We can't go to a show without acknowledging that if it's the case, it's right around this time. How about that? Yeah, you're exactly right. You and I are recording on December 18th and today Stone Cold is 58 years old. How about that? And if you guys had planned on giving him cash, he said to me, I think just send the cash to JR because you'll hold old. it for him. Yeah. Oh, I'll, oh yeah, I'll hold it for him. Yeah. <laughs> but happy birthday, Steve. We love you. Um, the big outburst, this is, uh, written that it's strike two. Of course, we remember the, the circumstance with, with Chris Jericho, but now we're having what's described as a temper tantrum, but. It feels like something you would have to deal with. Allegedly, as soon as he comes in the next day, he goes and talks to Vince and apologizes for it. Is that all that needs to be said? Or is there more at play here? What, what we want to do, write a theme. Yeah. You get a chalkboard and say, I will not act up again 500 times. I don't know what you do. I mean, he came to the man with a legitimate, uh, apology and, and he apologized to the one guy that he had to make happy and apologize to. And that was the owner. So, uh, I don't know what else he could have done. I mean, seriously, I'm being facetious and that other shit, but, uh, I thought he did the right thing there. He made a big mistake and along with that big mistake needs to come a big apology and to never, ever allow it to happen again. Did you perceive at this moment when you know he's unhappy with his pay and don't get me wrong, a 1.5 downside back then is strong as hell. Yeah, it is. It's strong as hell now but it was really strong way back when, but he still was expecting more and he's disappointed by that and doesn't love the creative and has had some dust ups backstage. Did you kind of feel like, is it even worth it to resign him? We got to try to keep this going. There's something here. Let's pull the nose up. Or is it more like, eh, let's get as much as we can out of this deal and just know it ain't happening. I think the latter had probably more validity than the, than the former of your two illustrations. Um, you know, I, I, I hated to say, let's give up. Uh, we'd invest a lot of money in bill, not just the 1.5 million in salary, but all the other, th all the other ancillary creative things that took money to produce and so forth and so on. So, uh, I, I think the apology was sufficient. Uh, but if you want to make more money to the live events, Guess what? You got to sell tickets. We weren't selling tickets. Right. Therefore the enhanced money, the uh, discretionary monies going above and beyond, uh, just wasn't there. The, what the productivity was not there to justify giving a guy more money on a, on a live event that you're losing money on. And that's the case. Meltzer right. It's not even close to hundred percent that WWE will even make an offer to him. Although that decision has not yet been finalized. It's believed that when he goes back to Japan and returns to the raw roster, that he and Jim Ross will talk about if either side is interested in serious negotiations or not. 
Goldberg is also a lot more physically banged up than most realize. And that be part, maybe part of his decision to not wanting to do another year. It's apparently been told to Goldberg that after he lost his cool, after his match at Armageddon, that another outburst would be considered as a final straw. Goldberg said he's going to finish up his commitments and try and make the last three months work. And the feeling internally is there won't be another situation. Of course, at the Royal Rumble, Goldberg comes in with the fame number 30. He's going to clean house and Lesnar is going to interfere and hit the F5 on Goldberg. Angle tosses him over the top rope and it ends Goldberg's dream of having another world title match. And this is some fun creative. Listen, I think everybody going into this assumes, well, Goldberg's going to win the Rumble and you find a fun, creative way to make sure that it's not the case. And then Goldberg would spear Steve Austin on raw after Vince McMahon moves out of the way during a promo. And that creates a circumstance where Austin is now going to be the special guest referee. And this is really fun, creative because the dream match for years and years was Goldberg and Austin. We're not going to get that. Austin's not wanting to wrestle, but having him in the same ring at WrestleMania, it's about as big of a deal as it could be. And I think behind the scenes. Goldberg and Austin were becoming pretty good friends at this time. Is that the way you recall? Yeah, they communicated well. Sure. Yeah. Along the way at no way out, Brock Lesnar is going to drop the WWE title to Eddie Guerrero after Bill's interference. And all of a sudden now Eddie Guerrero is the, uh, the world champ. And once upon a time, maybe we thought it was going to be champion versus champion Goldberg versus Lesnar. Now there's no titles in sight at all. And, uh, Meltzer would write or, or, uh, Wade Keller would write rather Goldberg will be working just one more date with the WWE. And that being WrestleMania 20, he won't be brought back to TV barring a change in plans until WrestleMania 20. He did have discussions or WWE did have discussions with Goldberg about a new contract, but no offer was made and the talks never got serious. A well-placed source says WWE officials asked Goldberg if he'd be willing to do future shots with the company. Once his contract expires, Goldberg was very forward with WWE and letting him know he won't spot. He won't talk generalities. He'll only talk specifics. He talked money, yeah. money, Connie. Yes. That's the, that's the code for uh, money specifics. How much will you pay me for these one-off shots? Meltzer would even say, or, or, or Wade would say rather, in other words, Goldberg wants WWE to approach him with an actual offer. The relationship between Goldberg and the office is said to be strained and sources say there's very little chance that WWE will offer Goldberg anything more than a special appearances deal. And even less of a chance that Goldberg would accept anything more than that. WWE is interested in booking Goldberg for their tour of Japan. And if they get him enough money for that tour and other special appearances, Goldberg would likely accept that it, it sounds just like <laughs> Wade's been talking to Barry, you know, where else are you going to get that information? A hundred percent accurate. And, here, and here's the thing that killed that match. The internet, the, you know, yes. what's that, that song, uh, ra radio kill the something. yeah video kill the radio star. Yeah. yeah. So that's, yeah. Something like that. You're a better singer than I. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, but Thank you. yeah, uh, I, it just kept getting, you know, the, the, at some point you just kind of want to throw your hands up and say, look, this shit ain't working. It has never worked. The guy made a lot of money and I don't know how much more money he made from merchandise and things like that. That would add to is 1.5 million. Maybe that was under uh, underestimated as well. I don't know. I don't, I don't remember what bill was making on his merch at that point in time, but it was significant. There was Goldberg merchandise sold, but uh, it wasn't on Austin's level or rock or some of those cats, but it was, it was significant. So, uh, but I think that frustration had set in, I think Vince was ready to move on. And, uh, so I never really committed myself to working out a new deal in a sense that it didn't seem like the other involved party Goldberg and his crew, uh, were that interested in, in, uh, extending and getting back to making another commitment in a business that Goldberg was obviously not married to. 
Well, and what's weird is this is WrestleMania season and the build to this dream match of, of Goldberg Lesnar doesn't even have Goldberg on it. It's just Austin and Brock building towards it. And then Brock says he's going home and quitting. So listen, it felt like as we started this, man, this is going to be Goldberg swan song along the way. It comes out. Hey, uh, we got more problems afoot here. And I know that's a show for another day. Lesnar's not happy either. At this point, the entire year that Goldberg has been here has to feel for lack of a better word, snake bit. No. Yeah, absolutely. It's just, that's a good way of putting it. Uh, and so then when all that gets out on the internet and all these guys, the Kellers and the Milsters and all these cats, uh, are, you know, almost glorifying it. They got a scoop or whatever. And they're running this big story. Cause that's what they do. Right. You know, we're, we're all about hits and all that other shit. Uh, it, it just, the crowd was, the crowd was, uh, you know, we did a special show on this this year a while back on ad free. Uh, have you seen that or you, you heard about it? I'm sure I've heard about it over at adfreeshows.com. You and Cassio kid watched this WrestleMania collision with Goldberg and Lesnar and Austin in the corner. Yeah, correct. So, uh, you know, and it, it, the, and here, here's the summation from Casio and I both is that the match was better than it's remembered as being. Yes. Yes. And, uh, uh, but the, but the, those guys, if it was a trial, uh, the jury had already declared their, their verdict before the match started. You're leaving us. You're deserting us. We've been here for you. We've, we've helped you facilitate making a lot of money, et cetera, et cetera. And this is what you do. And it just, it killed the whole thing. The, the passion for the match was largely eliminated, uh, thanks to the dissemination of information as, as to what was going to happen in the future. Meltzer wrote, it was the worst crowd possible for Goldberg versus Lesnar as a significant percentage, maybe 20% or more of the fans knew it was Lesnar's last match. According to several live sources, loud chant started when Lesnar came out and it wasn't long before everyone in the building had it figured out. The company had asked Lesnar not to say anything until after the match. And the chants were so loud that Jim Ross on the air acknowledged the chance and mentioned rumors that it was Lesnar's last match and that he was going to try out for the NFL. Mm-hmm. The WWE on its website did acknowledge it as the case shortly after the completion of the match. And the crowd was the story of the match with chance of you sold out. This match sucks. Boring. We want Brett. We want Hogan. And they heavily <laughs> booed everything that both did throughout the match. I'm not at a loss to explain why fans react like this, but it's an embarrassing thing to watch and explain. Of course, the match is not well remembered, but it really is. I mean, the, the, the fans took over the match and they became the story, which didn't give the guys much of an opportunity. No, no, they're dead. Like I said, the jury had already made their, their declared the verdict right before the trial started. We're done. And, uh, that's, that's where that was. So it, I felt bad for those guys. I, I really did. You know, I, you know, I signed Brock, I helped sign Goldberg. I like both guys for various reasons, but they both had a lot of similar characteristics as far as the physicality. Uh, I'll tell you that as good an athlete as Goldberg uh, was, he wasn't in Lesnar's league as far as ath- just being a pure athlete, right? There's a difference in injuries, age. Uh, and basic athleticism, uh, for Lesnar to get a chance to go try out for the Vikings and almost make the team. I think he was the last cut and he hadn't played football since high school. We're talking the national football league here. He was an extraordinary athlete and he still is as for that matter. You see flashes of that occasionally with this in, the, in the, some of the matches that he has that I've, uh, I've, I've watched, uh, just nobody like him in that regard. So, uh, I, uh, I, I love, uh, I love those guys, but I felt so badly for them. And the one that, if you look if you go back and look at it, Connie, the guy that's got the most consternation on his face is Austin. Yes. Like thinking, what the fuck am I doing in this thing? Yes. This is the cluster of all clusters. And here I am right in the middle of it. 
and, but thank God Austin was there because those two stunners he delivered at the end to one to each guy was, was money. It finally gave the fans something to embrace and cheer for. Well, something we're all cheering for these days is the way we feel. Thanks to AG one. I got to admit athletic greens has been a part of my life. Even before the pandemic started, my wife really wanted us to start optimizing our immune system at the start of the pandemic. So we started taking AG one every single day. She knew that I would do it because, well, I don't like taking pills or vitamins. And if I'm going to do it, I want a supplement that actually tastes good. Well, this does it. It also gives us well, a lot of support. Take a listen. When you absorb one delicious scoop of AG one, that's it. Just one scoop of AG one every day. You're going to be absorbing 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source, superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day. Right. This special blend of ingredients is going to better support your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, your focus, your recovery, your aging, all of your things. And we think of it as like your all in one nutritional insurance. Our friend Dallas wants you to know it's lifestyle friendly, whether you eat keto or paleo or vegan or dairy free or gluten free, this checks all the boxes. It also has less than one gram of sugar, no GMOs, no nasty chemicals, no artificial anything. And it still tastes good. It's going to support better sleep quality and recovery. It's going to support mental clarity and alertness. And here's what Jim and I are most impressed about because we're entrepreneurs, right? Yep. AG one yep. has over 7,000 five-star reviews. That's unheard of. That's that. If there's anything more you need folks than that statement, which is a true statement, let us know. Cause I don't know what, what it could be. 7,000 7, ratings. Yep. Uh, it's a, it's amazing. And it's a testament to this product and how well it works. Well said, because the reality is when's the last time any of us went out of our way to leave a review, it's not something we make a part of our daily routine. So to have more than 7,000 people love the product so much, they went and sought out how to leave a review. It tells you this is the good stuff. And right now we think it's time to reclaim your health, arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills or supplements to look out for your health. And to make it easy, Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you got to do is visit athleticgreens.com forward slash JR. Again, that's athleticgreens.com forward slash JR to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Good stuff. Works, folks. Get a shot. Well, listen, man, uh, this is uh, bowling shoe ugly WrestleMania 20. Do you talk to either guy before the show, after the show? What do you remember of that day and your talking, interaction with I'm, these folks? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Connor. I was talked out. I got a show. I got WrestleMania to do. Yeah. Not the time to go back and recoup old, open old wounds. And is there anything yeah. we can do and all this other bullshit? Look, they, they, they were making a ton of money. Yeah. Both guys. And they didn't want to be there. What more can I do? Pay them more money to rent their services, not their heart, not their soul, not their passion, but to, to rent their services or images. Uh, and I, there's a, that was the time and the place to do that. Uh, at least in my view, we had a, it was a hell as WrestleMania 20, man, it's master square garden. And for some of us, that still means a lot. Yes. You don't think I would love to call a match in master square garden before I hang it all up. Of course I would. So, uh, the garden's a special place, no matter who you're working for. And I, I was, uh, that's what I was focused on. I was going to sit at ringside and do play by play for WrestleMania 20 in Madison square garden. And for a lifelong fan, that's huge. That's huge. So no, I didn't talk to them. Uh, look, the hay was in the barn. As we say in Oklahoma, it's done deal. We Goldberg's thing. We had that. He's got one, one event left. He's booked. It's here at garden and Brock have been it very, very clear to anyone that would listen or anyone within earshot. He wanted out his love of wrestling and lack of lust better said his lack of love of uh, pro wrestling, uh, finally was way out in the open and he wanted to do something else, but all along, we all knew what motivated Brock. Same thing that motivates you today. Cash. 
doll hairs. Yes, sir, buddy. Well, listen, we know that's going to be the end of Goldberg in the WWE for 12 years. He finally returns in 2016, shockingly defeats Brock Lesnar in 86 seconds at Survivor Series. Now we start to push Goldberg, maybe how we should have to begin with. He defeats Kevin Owens for the WWE title in February of 17. Sets up a rematch with Lesnar at WrestleMania 33 in Orlando, which Brock is going to win. He goes in the 2018 hall of fame and makes sporadic appearances, uh, for the universal title and works with Bray Wyatt and the fiend and Braun Strowman. And I guess his final opponent or his original opponent rather, instead of Braun Strowman was Roman reigns, but of course, Roman during that COVID WrestleMania was, was not available, but he does make appearances since he puts reigns over, uh, earlier this year in Saudi Arabia. And a lot of people think that may be it. And I think Goldberg's probably one of the more misunderstood talents. And I think a lot of WWE fans look back at his first WWE run and, and, and point a lot of fingers at him. I think we've demonstrated today that plenty of blame to go around there, but it was a failure of the creative in order to help check the boxes, you know, Goldberg when left to do Goldberg things could still draw money. But when we asked him, Hey, well, why don't you go wrestle a 20 minute match and put on this wig uh, that, well, that's just not what made him in the first place. Right? No, of course or not. It's, it's absurd. Uh, the failure of the Goldberg experience round one was that of bad introduction. We assumed everybody knew who he was. We assumed everybody assumed that he was a big star. He was to many of us, but to, to the new audience and so forth or audience that had not invested in WCW, he wasn't right. The mistake was not allowing him to get repackaged, re-promoted the vignettes, the training, all these things to get you to invest in it, his characters, TV persona, emotionally, none of that was offered him. You just don't go from Austin rock beating Austin at, at WrestleMania 19 to, if I've got all these dates correct, Connie, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but you know, you, you got Austin losing and, and the same thing on the internet stuff that happened to, to, to expose this match with Goldberg and Brock, uh, was there with Austin. People knew this was Austin's swan song and, and a lot, a lot of them were still reacting and processing that information. And I thought it was disrespectful to Steve and how that went down. Uh, of course I'm, I'm biased and I might be wrong, but Austin and I are friends. And I think he, his contribution to the company were extraordinary. And I don't think we acknowledge him quite frankly. And it's almost like grieving. You know, I, I find myself waking up at three or four o'clock in the morning with tears in my eyes and running down my face because I'm still grieving. And I don't even know why the fuck I'm crying but it is what it is. There's no manual for this stuff. There's no manual to get you out of the, your love of a wrestling character. Uh, if you're a true diehard wrestling fan, it's hard to get over departure. It's hard to get over separation anxiety. So, uh, I'm a, I'm a big, uh, a big believer that, uh, we, that was a mistake there. It didn't help Goldberg. Uh, and I don't know. I, 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 I don't think the, the this debacle a Goldberg one, uh, had, it had a lot more to do with creative by far than it did the individual un being unwilling to try things. When you got this monster parading around in a blonde wig, he seems to be able to try things. They're just for the wrong things. What do you think his legacy in the business will be Jim? Oh, huge star. Yeah. Fame level guy. And he didn't do it because he was a Jack Briscoe scientific fundamentalist. He, his look, his intensity, the same intensity that got him in trouble for acting out after matches and throwing tables and so forth, uh, breaking a, you know, his, run his fist through a car window at one time. I think that was a WCW. Uh, you know, I, I, he, that same intensity he carried with him all the time and he had a short fuse. He was a warrior. He was a battler 
And sometimes he was confused about what the hell the business is, how this is working, how this should work, or what is the tradition or the trend. If a baby face tells you that he is going to win the title, the old rule of thumb is he's going to win the title. Right. Baby faces cannot lie to the audience or exaggerate to the audience to the degree of absurdity. But I think Bill's reputation is going to end up being probably going to grow in stature as time goes on. He really was a phenomenon. He stopped and think about it. And again, I tip my black hat to uh, WCW creative when they got him on that street. Cause here's the deal. And, I, and maybe Eric could clarify this. He'd, he'd be the guy to ask. Maybe they didn't know exactly what to do with it. Right. I mean, they had something. So until we figure that out, let's just have you keep winning. And that worked 170 something wins, right? Something like that. Yeah. It was crazy. Yeah. So I'm a, I'm a big, uh, I, I, I'm a believer in both Brock and Goldberg's legacies are going to be comparable, but for different reasons, but they're both, uh, generational talents without a question. What do you think? Uh, there was lots of rumors before AEW announced the TV deal when AEW was still just in discussion and it was just an idea hadn't been executed yet. A lot of people were saying, Hey, what about Goldberg? As if he was sort of one of these other talents that were out there that might not be under contract that could be snagged and, and might have a, a, a bit of a name that we could launch a national t- television show with, or what have you. We know it didn't wind up happening. You think there's any chance we see Goldberg and AEW one day as a one-off here or there? That's strictly a Tony Khan question. And I don't to pretend to want to think for Tony. He's a different level than I, uh, and he doesn't, that's, he and I don't have a, that relationship. We don't talk about the creative. Right. Uh, and, uh, which is fine with me. I'm not complaining about that by the way, but I don't see it right now, Connie, but I, I can't conclusively say never. Or whatever. I can't because I don't know. I'd be guessing. My guess is no. But stranger things, of course, have happened. Yes, they have. Uh next week we're gonna talk about one of those stranger things. The last starcade you'll ever work took place 30 years ago. Lethal Lottery 2 Battle Bowl. It's the final starcade featuring an NWA title match of Masahiro Chono will defend against the great Muda. Ron Simmons will defend his WCW title against Dr. Death. Barry Windham and Brian Pillman will challenge Ricky Steamboat and Shane Douglas for the tag titles and sting will take on big Van Vader in the King of the cable tournament finale. This is going to be a fun show. I mean, it maybe wasn't the best show of all time, but looking back at the way wrestling has changed three decades later is always fun. And I'm looking forward to next week, dude. Yeah, me too. A lot of great names on that card at different points of their growth in their careers. We'll talk about that. Some of the behind the scenes stuff should be fun to discuss. So folks will tune in to us uh, next week. And in the meantime, uh, and as they say, in between time, enjoy the holidays, enjoy the holidays. Absolutely. Big shout out to everybody and their families. I know there's a big travel weekend and hope everybody gets to their uh, respective celebration points safely. And, uh, in the meantime, if you got some downtime, check out adfreeshows.com where Jr. goes and revisits that. Pretty controversial WrestleMania 20 main event. Uh, if you are going to be getting together with your family and maybe you're going to be getting some, some gifts and giving some gifts, can we recommend jrsbbq.com one last time? Yes, we can. <laughs> uh, we'd also love to have your interaction here on the program. Jim's on Twitter at jrsbbq. I am at Hey, Hey, it's Conrad. Our show handle is at jr grilling on Twitter and Instagram or grilling jr on Facebook. But the easiest way to introduce the wrestling fan in your life to our YouTube or to our show is through our YouTube, rather. It's grillingjr on youtube.com. How easy does that get? Just bang easy. that in your browser there, grillingjr on youtube.com. Got some really new fun shirts over at grillingjrts.com as well. And uh, I just want to remind everybody that I am in the business of saving people money. I do it each and every day at savewithconrad.com. And maybe if you're a little stressed out, maybe you put Christmas on a credit card. Maybe you're going to make a new year's resolution to save money. We can help you jumpstart that right now at savewithconrad.com. First of all, we can knock out all your credit card debt, just like that. And you don't need perfect credit or money out of your pocket to do this. We routinely help our podcast listeners 
say five, six, seven, even 800 bucks a month. And once again, you don't need perfect credit or money out of your pocket. And if we can't save you some cash, we won't waste your time, but we've got one five-star review after another. Here's another from Christopher in Ohio. He gave us a five-star review and he says, we are out of state customers, but Conrad made us feel like we were right inside his office with quick responses and detailed advice. Five stars. We make it easy to save you money. If you're thinking about buying a house in the new year, we're your first stop. Save with Conrad.com. NMLS number 65084, equal housing lender. Oh, and did I mention no house payments for two months? That's right. You won't have to make your January or your February payment. You're done until March 1st. It'll be WrestleMania season before you're thinking about house payments again. That's save with Conrad.com. Jim, this was fun. I hope you have a super badass holiday. You deserve it. I'm going to be in Oklahoma part of the time, Conrad. I'm going to actually go into Oklahoma and get reacquainted with my children. I think they'll still remember me. I hope so. Uh, I'm kidding. But yeah, I'm going to Oklahoma and spend a few days and I'm going to fly back to uh, Jacksonville to get ready to get geared back up for AEW business every Friday night on Rampage. Uh, check us out. Rampage is getting better. And, yeah, it is. Uh, it's uh, Tony's, Tony Khan's adding some star power to it. I think it's timely and much needed. And it's uh, a lot more. It's a, it's a, it's the most fun I've had doing Rampage uh, because, you know, that, the match here a while back with Moxley and, uh, who the hell did he work with? Oh, uh, C- C- uh, uh, to catch Sammy. Sammy. Oh yeah. Sammy, yeah, yeah. Sammy Guevara was where Guevara pulled the earring out of his ear. Oh man. Uh, yeah. That was gra- graphic to say the least, but nonetheless, great. Sh- it's, we have some really good shows. Uh, Tony's doing a good job of adding some muscle to that show. It's a star power. And, uh, you know, I've had. I've had guys come to me and say, well, I'm sure I'm glad I'm on rampage or I'm getting to work on rampage because I want you to call my match or something nice, nice things. So, uh, check us out on Friday nights on TNT Of course, the flagship shows on Wednesday nights on TBS, a lot of good stuff going on. So enjoy But the main thing, enjoy the holidays or what the holidays are intended to be enjoyed for. Yes, sir. And hug a loved one, call somebody you haven't talked to in a while. Hey, or text them. If you don't feel like interacting, you don't feel good about that for whatever reason, you're self-conscious about it. Send a text, just something Just communicate, reach out, reach out to the ones you love and enjoy your holidays. That's what I'm going to do. Well said shout out to everybody and their families. Hope everybody has a merry, very merry Christmas. And we'll be back next week talking all things Starcade from 30 years ago, right here on grilling Jr. With the voice of wrestling, Mr. Jim Ross. Boomer Sooner.